Yo, 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 what's up, what's up? Welcome back up, to guys? Let's Chop It Up. How my brothers are doing, man? How my brothers are doing? Doing good, on? doing good, doing good. Yeah. What's going on with you, Rod? How you, your weekend, brother? My week was good, you know. Yeah. I went out to dinner with um friend of, friend of mine and his wife and my wife, and we had a good time. We went to um Brooklyn Chop House. Um, uh, in, in Brooklyn, obviously. No, it's actually, no, it's actually not in Brooklyn. Oh. It's, it's actually in Manhattan. So, um, you know, people use that Brooklyn name all over yeah, the place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People got Brooklyn's names in Florida. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Very um, <laughs> nah, good place. Um, I'm understanding that a brother owns the spot, yeah. one of the owners or yep. whatever. Yep. So I definitely would recommend it. Brooklyn Chop House. Yep. Yep. Um, I'm, I'm, uh, Chicken Wing, that's his man that owns it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He, he, yeah. he did. He hit me up and told me that was his man. Yeah, but, um, and, I know, his, his, and I know his brother. I know the guy's brother, China. Yeah, his his man is doing his thing. Like I said, the food was good. I had um Philly cheesesteak um dumplings. Damn. Yeah, Philly cheesesteak dumplings. I mean, the menu the menu was very broad and exotic. You know what I'm saying? I was impressed with it. The drinks were the drinks were definitely banging. So um, like I said, I, the ambiance was good. They were playing music all night. It it definitely it definitely I definitely recommend it. Do you have to pull out your big wallet for that place? <laughs> um, I'm gonna say it's gonna set you back a little bit. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we we can't we can't forget we are in Manhattan. You know what I'm saying? This is true. The rent is so high. The rent right. is high. The rent is too damn high. What the happened to that guy? High. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he got, got evicted. Um, I mean, that's exactly what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you know. If you got a if you got a lady or somebody you care about, I definitely would recommend you know taking it. In. Also, make reservations because you definitely ain't gonna walk up in there. So obviously, this is not a side chick place. Nope. Don't take a side chick. <laughs> Listen, there's there's levels to shit. <laughs> and this ain't this ain't the side spit the side piece spot spot. You gotta you know take like I said, take your lady or somebody you care about there. You gotcha, know what I mean? gotcha. That's good. Derek, how was your week, brother? Man, it's all good. I can't. I can't really say. I. I. I had anything as good as what is it? Philly steak, Philly cheese, Philly cheese, cheese steak dumplings. dumplings. Man, that's a combination, brother. Like, yeah. like damn, boy, you got to pull out your big boy wallet for that. <laughs> that's exceptional, right there, man. I'm glad that you had a good time. I, yeah, you know, I'm just kind of hanging out, man. It's just enjoying this, enjoying this warm weather, man. This week, man. So you know, What's just up? trying to get free and get a little outside time. Still in the gym, y'all stay with me on this, man. Right, right. So, you know, so I'm just trying to make sure I go uh consistently, man. So, I'm you know, I'm just trying to feel good, you know what I mean? Nothing fancy, I'm not trying to be the most swole dude in the gym, you know what I mean? Right. We're just getting older. I think you yeah. and I talked about this once, Rodney. Uh, let's uh, just start stretching, you know, yeah, just trying to stretch and but, things of that nature, you know what right. I mean? And just get myself moving. So, yeah, I'm good, man. Everything's good, life is good, wife is good, kids are good, we're good, man. Yeah, That's what's up. Yeah. My, my brother Kelvin, how about you, my brother? Well, Derek, we in it now. Spending a Saturday night talking about stretching. Well, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah we <laughs> nah, that's good. Look, yeah. I'll tell you, I've been trying not to talk about the natives. I've been making a concerted effort. <laughs> you know, I've been trying. I really have. But the problem is, warm weather brings uh, out the yeah, natives. The natives. Yeah. It just does. So I want to say this: this is this is a, a native uh, public service announcement. <laughs> Everybody that owns like an ATV, okay? ATVs are not for the parkway. It's not for regular streets, okay? And then the other thing is last night I'm driving. They must have had the black Indy 500 right there in Queens, New York. I've never seen anything. I don't know where the cops are at. I don't know where the cops I mean, these dudes is doing a buck 10 on the belt parkway. I get a headlight that's dim. I get pulled over. These dudes, I, I'm driving. A dude blocked off a lane. Like he was an emergency service vehicle for his friends to go, and I mean, I'm just, I just want to say this: all, all the natives, I appeal to you, please don't kill, <laughs> kill yourselves. Don't kill, no, I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> just, 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 we need to, even though this is live, we should edit that out. But listen, on the real, we got, we got to do better. We got to do yeah. better as a yeah. people. I say that. And knowing that we're not going to do better, I just wanted to say that. <laughs> listen, the, the the natives are coming out. Listen, it's about to be native time, native juice season. That's the oh, nutcracker. Yeah. The nutcracker will be a cool <laughs> You know, yeah. it's, it's so funny, right? Like speaking of that, right? So, I, like, I got the second shot. Not a lot of people, not not no vaccines, all the other stuff like that. So, if you had what I had, you get it, right? But people drink nutcrackers from random dudes on the street. 
Think about this. We buy fruit from people at stoplights. <laughs> Those yeah. terrible things in the subway. You know what I'm saying? You get water off these dirty kids with no shirt. <laughs> so like, yeah. we take, like, you know, we buy weed from a dude we don't know where the weed came from. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. So like, yeah. you know, we, and we eat Doritos. Yeah. We don't even know where the, the red shit on the Doritos come from. <laughs> so, so all you anti-vaccine people that tell me all that shit, please stop. Look what you put in your own damn mouth in your body. It's a <laughs> still here. Shit, yeah. <laughs> so that, yeah, but speaking of that vaccine, man, I got it, man. It, it knocked me down. My week was my week was whew, that thing. They told me because I have the antibodies in me, I was gonna have a hard time. Brothers, I had a hard time. That yeah, joint I mean, yeah. was gonna be real weak, but we back, we here, we ready to chop it up, right? So we good. Okay. Everything's good. So what yeah. on the on the chopping block for today? We're going to talk about block. your man, Derek Jackson. Oh, wow. My man, Derek Jackson. If wow. clown ass native yeah. was a pitcher <laughs> yeah. or a human, it would be him. This yeah. clown, man. I, I, I just get, guys, this before, even for my man, Derek Jackson, I'm going to say, let's rest in peace, Derek Jackson's career. I think it's okay. I think let's, let's do our Kelvin. We might need to do a service right now. Can you lay hands on our brother Derek James? <laughs> <laughs> so, go ahead. Go ahead. Un un unpack it a little bit. Unpack it. All right. Out All of right. this whole thing with, with him, what has disturbed you the most? Him talking to third person. No, that, <laughs> yeah, that not me. Bad. That not me. No? That that didn't disturb me the most. You know, no. I mean, it to me, it seems like I'm the only person that sees it this way. Right. Now, when I seen Derek Jackson sit down with his wife and do that video or whatever, now, I'm just speaking from my perspective. If this had happened to me and my wife, I would want not want to be nowhere in a room with her at all. Because the thing is, I could get stabbed. Yeah. So the thing <laughs> yeah. is, for my wife to sit down and do a video after I just cheated on her, that ain't happening. So that thing is, I kind of question a lot of things with that. Like, you know, how did he get his wife to do that? She seemed like kind of out of it. You know what I'm saying? She seemed like numb to it. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I don't know what kind of behavior they got going on at home. But to me, that shit was severely abnormal. I, I, I got a theory behind it, Rodney. Mm -hmm. I got a theory because I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen in, in ministerial circles. I've just seen it. And what happens is this. This is just my theory mm -hmm. that one person that has caused the infraction if that person happens to be the same person that probably is responsible for most of the income, that mm -hmm. person will sit down, I think, with the person and be like, look, if we go down, if I go down, we both yeah, go we down. all go down. Yeah. So we, we got to make a decision. So take you might that. just have to take one. You might have to take one for the team if you want that bins and stuff to remain outside. Now, I don't think it's right. I think at the end of the day, you know, you you owe your, your spouse or something more than that, probably. But I mm -hmm. think that's the conversation because I've seen I've seen people that were, were couples. And you know the person has been doing stuff for years, and they stay with it because they like the lifestyle that it affords them. And one of my friends said something. Um, she said something I always. She said, whenever you see a couple, no matter how bad it looks, there's something they get out of it. The one that stays, they get mm -hmm. something out of it. And I think that's what what you're seeing here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, you, know, you got a strong point. Yeah. You got a strong point there, Kelvin. Yeah, you got a strong point yeah. There. You know? yeah. yeah, but, but then, I, the, then he I'm blamed it on me. the brother. Blamed it on God. Wait, like he, he doesn't he, want to accept he, any responsibility on himself. He, He's gonna blame he, it on somebody. He has Donald Trump in him. He's yeah, the video was disturbing. A, like, yeah. Like, it was it was very very disturbing. It was like you know you yeah. want to blank twice for help. You know yeah, something like anything awesome. like shake up <laughs> shake up move your bonnet to the left. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I mean I, I, something. Yeah, I want to leave. You know what I'm saying? Like you know like you know, shake the bonnet. Like yo, he, like uh, he's shaking like something with do. She was signing some, some kind of signal. It was disturbing. I don't know. Like you said, yeah. we're staying there for the money. I don't know if she like you know some people the religion is keeping her there for the religion she did that keep her there. I, it was bad. I have a theory about that too. Go ahead, Kevin. Right. It's, it's, it's just you know theory night. Yeah. Okay, so I get the impression theory number two. Go, Kevin. I get the impression that this guy thinks that in some way he's done her a favor. The woman that I saw sitting next to him does not line up with this brand i think that he's trying to present i just don't think it does mm -hmm. so i think in his mind she mm -hmm. was fortunate to get with him in his mind mm -hmm. and then he was able to build this brand and yeah. and and when when you paint yourself as this really good guy 
And then there's a, a bunch of single women in the community that's like, oh, I wish I had a guy like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you get a person with an ego like his, he can leverage her like, oh, you know what? I mean, I, I, I'm with you, but I mean, I could be with any woman I want to be with and whatever. And so I think that's what you're seeing. So I think he's trying to give her the impression like, look, you should be happy. You know what I mean? I'm fending off women all the time type situation. I think that's what he's presenting to her. So I think I, I've always been taught that that um, involuntary submission is manipulation. And I think yeah. that this person is manipulating th this person. You can look at her, her posture, her situation, <laughs> that yeah. anger and all the stuff that she had. He made sure by the time those cameras went on, we're going to look like it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a front. We're going to stand together. And I think that's what it is. I think the person is hurting. I think the person is deeply embarrassed. I, my understanding is she's uh, being humiliated on social media. And so you got to make a decision in front of other women to sit here and stay, even though it feels like you're being made a fool of. Mm -hmm. And I think he's constantly feeding her. So when, that, when D is talking about that he blamed God, what the easiest thing for people to do is throw faith in there. Because mm -hmm. once a person blames God, then nobody can dispute that. Mm -hmm. That's why when people come to you, God told me there has to be a confirmation. You know what I mean? It has to line mm -hmm. up with something. But the, God told me. So therefore, once you bring mm -hmm. God into the equation, who am I to argue with God? So that's why right. people try to represent God. So they feel like that, that they're infallible. And, and, so when you bring up, and I think that's what he's doing. Yeah. And when mm -hmm. you bring up God, people are afraid to challenge it. When exactly. you, yeah, you, know. yeah. you can't yeah. challenge yeah. faith, man. That's the right. thing about it. It's yeah. faith. You can't challenge faith. But the sister looked like she had PTSD to me, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Honestly, I'm very, right? very broken. Very broken. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Nikki broken. said, Nick, Nikki mentions, yeah, he's a narcissist. That's what I got as well. You know yeah. what I mean? He yeah. probably is a narcissist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I don't know. You correct. You guys correct me if you're wrong. I, I'm not. A, I didn't. I never followed him or anything like that. But in his videos, did he ever show his wife before? I, I, I don't. I don't follow. I don't, him. I don't follow the, him. the women have to say I don't. I don't follow him like that. But the yeah, because I would like to know the answer to that. Because the thing is, you know, he's he's talking about how amazing guy he is, how faithful he was, and all this stuff like that. But he never, oh, know. but he never has his woman. You never see. That's him why. Before. That's why Someone I'm asking so, that. Right, correct. Right. That's who's that brings so important to him. He correct. Never, he never, never see sees him. If you, if you, if your wife, if your wife is your queen, exactly. she, you're putting her on a pedestal or whatever. How does no one ever see her until right. this happened? So somebody just right. just said no. So that's yep. the thing that I want to know because, like, I'm able to see through right. him. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And another thing too, if you look at a lot of pictures of Derek Jackson, he's he's posing in pictures as though like he's a sex symbol. Like he's mm -hmm. trying to attract women. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Men that are point. like men that are faithful to their wives or faithful to their girlfriends or whatever. Mm -hmm. The last thing you're trying to do is attract women to yourself because yeah. you're not trying to get no problems. Because you know a lot of these dudes use women as a prop, Rodney. It, it, right. It's a yeah. prop. That's that's that that's part. You cannot have his brand without having a woman. Oh wow! You you see brand, so you need you you need that. Now the question is, what is the payoff? You see what yeah. I'm saying? Like, I know women that have been married to dudes that are gay in ministry, yeah. in yeah. ministry, and they, they, they're living in million dollar homes and driving hundred thousand dollar cars. And to them, that's worth it. You see what I'm saying? And that's what they're doing. And that's the front. And so what happens is this. When a lot of times we look at these women like victim, what they are really is co-conspirators. They're actually yeah. part of it because they can't pull this off without the the help of the person they're with. Right. Right. So, right. Kevin, how long have you known Kurt Flink, Franklin? Then? I met you know Kurt people, Franklin. I mean, you know people I, in ministry that I, have I, wives, but I look at that. So it's funny. It's so funny that you say that. Imagine, that's foul. And I'm not saying those are these words. I'm not saying that. I have I have to admit though. I do see some attire and stuff where I'm like, all right, you know, there needs yeah. to be a meeting or something. But no, yeah, on the real, I just got, look, I, look, I come from a, a Vietnam veteran father, so that we came up from a, di you know, a different time. But I actually met Kirk Franklin um, in 1995 in New Orleans. And that was when it was Kirk Franklin and the family. And he was like the biggest thing at that moment. What, I, you know, there's been years people have tried to toe this line between secular and gospel music. And if somebody goes right down the middle, they usually get pretty large. And I think that's what happened with him. And um, yeah, it's a, it's an interesting situation. Yeah. I got to admit, masculinity is it, it, on the ropes. I can't yeah, yeah, But yeah, I want yeah. you to know something. You call me rope dope because I'm staying in the game, bro. <laughs> I can't run. But listen, yeah. I, I mean, I listen, I hope Derek X finds, you know, he, he took videos in front of his side chick's house. It was just crazy. I hope yeah. he finds some kind of peace in life, you know I mean? 
Yeah, it is but what it back, is. I mean, back to one point, real quick. The he brought, he brought her out when he needed her. He brought it out as an actor. Yeah, but, but, he, right, but, he, right, but right, whatever, right. like all the women in the chat were saying, like he never posted video. That's, of that's what I say. But, but she, it's, but it's she always confirms how much of a yeah, fraud yeah. he was. Yeah, yeah. You know so, what I'm saying? Yeah, so it's a, it's a, exactly, exactly. Like you know, you want to say you're a couples guy? Why you never show that you're a couple? Why you never <laughs> showed this woman before? Because the exactly. brand, the brand. Yeah, and, and yeah. Words, it looks like his brand. And what happens is this. It, he's saying, "Look, you coming off the bench now? We need yeah. you in the game. Now. I need you in the game. Yeah, yeah. I see, I, you know, fourth quarter with four seconds, we need you to hit yeah. the shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I, yeah. I yeah. It. I'm gonna bring you out here. And it, I'm gonna bring you out in this bonnet." And you're gonna bring your crooked glasses out, and you're gonna sit here, and you're gonna do what I tell you to do. That's, it. That's, yeah. see, see, That's exactly something. what he said too. How he yeah. said it, I'm sure. I'm gonna yeah. say something that's gonna get women upset. You can't wear that bonnet all the time. All you women that go in the street, them damn bonnets, them damn trailers. <laughs> <laughs> Alfred, you can't do now, that. Now, now, before you move on, I want to just ask this question. Now, honestly, as a community of men, especially as black men, um, is there a path of rehabilitation for this brother? I say no, no, no. I say, I say no. yes. I Yo. say yes. I say uh -oh. it's not. A, it's, uh oh, it's, here we go. I say yes. It's because listen, he can outgrow that. You know what I mean? Like he can grow past that behavior. I think you know. Listen, if we we can never, we can never. <laughs> it wasn't a body. It was a hat. <laughs> <laughs> Nicky, Nicky, it looked like it, it, then it was a chef hat. That yeah. shit was big as hell. That shit was big. Hey. And that's not saying though, but he can he can <laughs> outgrow it because you know you listen. You, we, I don't know about, you know, everybody's had their time. They had a young, inexperienced no, 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 time. I think you know? he got to grow it as, in his personal life. Correct. I think his brand is damaged. It's damaged. So, no, not damaged. even, not even that, because people love a comeback. And people love, if you can, if you can, I think he started off wrong. I think you have to, you have to really show that you are sorry. You know what I mean? And really show that, you know, um, you know, it was my mistake and I really want to make amends. Uh, but and and I think someone we, we talked about this earlier uh, in the week. Someone said, "Show him, throw himself on the sword." You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um and 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 maybe if he can, maybe if he does that, he can he can kind of come mm -hmm. out of it. But see, 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 this is the thing. This is the thing. I'll tell <laughs> you this, you. and I, well, I, I think you both you're right. right. I think you both. I think you're both right. I think we're gonna have to do. Yes, it uh, is. Uh, I think D is right yeah. in regard that his era of infallibility is over. And oh I yeah, think, yeah, yeah. I think Derek is right in the fact that what he's gonna do is take this now. And he's going to rebrand this now to be the reconciliation thing and how you come back from it. So what happens is this. Let me tell you the difference between what he did and the ministers that fall. OK, I'm going to tell you the difference. This is the difference. So you take somebody like me that's been in ministry. Right. My objective is not to lead people to me because I can't save anybody because I'm a man. I'm not infallible. So we lead you to Christ. We lead you to a deity. What he did was he led you to himself. And that's why what he did was he's saying that other men do this wrong. And other men, if you don't want the woman, then you just shouldn't, shouldn't say that you would have married and all this. So what he did was he elevated himself. He put yeah. himself on a pedestal. And so that's why once you do that and once you make anything about you, any pedestal you put yourself on, you just make the fall greater. And that's yeah. what it is. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So I yeah. never tell people, hey, you need to be like Kelvin. You don't need to be like Kelvin because Kelvin sins and falls short just like you do. Mm -hmm. But you know what I'm saying? So you need to be the one that's higher than all of us. And that's the mistake that he made. That's why my issue with the motivational speaker is you're actually presenting something as if that you have it all together. Like if you want to fix my life and all that stuff like that, you can't fix your life. So how are you yeah. going to fix my life? Yeah. I, but you, can, you can still be a transformational example just by showing how infallible you are too, is you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you know how fallible. Yeah, but you that's, are. So, but that shouldn't be that shouldn't be recourse to you falling. Yeah, yeah, but you know, let's let's move on from this brother to uh, something else. It's kind of funny. Uh, pipping religion, since we all talking about it right now, is our brother Ryan Davis is a comedian. I went to go see, and this guy's hilarious. And uh, Jamie, can you play the um, video real quick about Derek Jackson and Pippin? One thing I've never liked is when people scam people while using religion to do so. Don't use God to do your scandalous things you want to do. If you want to scam people, then do that. Ed Citronelli bothers me. Y'all remember this video? Oral sex demo. You see oral sex. Look, oral sex. Look, 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 look. You, you oral sex. Use oral sex. Let that sperm of that man out. Out. Out, you demo. I couldn't be in that church. Me and that pastor would have to talk about some things. 
Um, excuse me, Pastor. When that dick sucking demon jump out of her, where is it gonna go? Cause I ain't sucking no dick, bruh. I think Ed Citronelli and everybody that's a part of his congregation are actors and scammers just doing this in order to get people to. Niggas, that Derek Jackson? Oh my God. Oh my God. I thought this video was about Ed. Nope. Derek Jackson part three. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that dude. I love and he's that gonna, dude. And y'all gonna come. I, I, I'll, I'll be amazed if the dude come back. This guy, everybody's see uh, receipts are coming out. Everything's coming out. The dude's a fraud, bro. The yeah, yeah, a fraud. yeah. You got, <laughs> you know, I got a, I got a real problem with with when people prey on people, right? You know, the thing is, in his case, he, you know, he's preying on people with religion. He's selling people hope. And he's and he's preying on them, just like you know, like we use Donald Trump. Donald Trump is selling mm -hmm. fear. He sells mm -hmm. fear. So if you selling hope or you selling fear, you you're gonna take advantage of a lot of people. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then, like I say, you you know, people are always trying to look to try to make themselves better in some way, and you're preying on that. I, that's the lowest form of life. I I I, I think there yeah. is. You, you know, know what, man? I, I, I listen. Religion. I hate to say it, is but you know. It's the original hustle, man. You know what I mean? You can just turn around and you can just put something into someone's brain, man, and just send them off. Like literally, it's the, it's what is faith? Uh, it's uh, what do they call it? It um, it's uh, belief in the evidence of something that's not seen or whatever. You can get people to that point. You can do anything with them. You know what I mean? They, they're selling hope. And, yeah, that's you know, and they get people so down that people just try anything, man. And you know, yeah, he's, he's definitely it's it's the original pimp thing, man. Why do you think so many pimps become crap preachers later on? You know what I'm saying? I, it's like it's, it's, it's well, I think, I think any I think with anything there has to be checks and balances. And I think that's the issue. It has to be checks and balances. There has to be culpability, there has to be accountability. That's the reality of it. You know what I mean? And there and so what what happens is there are people that tap into people's brokenness. Again, no matter who you are or what field you're in or whatever, there's always gonna be someone that tries to find a way to manipulate people through it. And so let's let's look at that clip we just saw. That to me, even the language was just inappropriate. Mm -hmm. uh, you know. Now let me tell you something. There there are certain people that have you know certain things, whether it's a sexual problem or whatever like that. That does not need to be said over a microphone. You don't need to tell uh, that a woman had. It, it, let's say if she did have some problem with oral sex, that doesn't need to be articulated in front of people like that. That doesn't need to be there to shame people or embarrass people or whatever. Those things don't need to be done. So what I'm saying is, even that, there's still a, there's still a way and a code of conduct that people should handle themselves. You know, and so once church becomes entertainment now, so so let me say this. So so the the hundreds of thousands of people that are not scamming people, they will be labeled with the person that is and that's just the bottom line and so that's where we're at right now and i mean i do think that looked terrible it just did i think it sounded terrible you know was and, yeah you know and so that's that's just <laughs> the bottom line and i mean there's damage that may not even be repaired from from situations like that and i've seen a lot of that growing up i've been places like that seeing that can you, you imagine know? a person who's really trying to get right with faith going to that church for the first time man you know and and seeing that you know, like, well, how would how what did, what what would that do to your faith walk? You know what I mean? After, and, and let me tell you something, Derek. This is what has happened to me for years. I spent most of my life working secular jobs. Most of the money I've ever made in my life does not come from church. It doesn't come from ministry. So the moment mm -hmm. I buy a car, and then it's a nice car, oh, there you go. He's stealing the church money, and that's what, so so you get it on that. So I don't get money from church. I don't get I I I have I don't get a dime from church. If I go somewhere, they'll give me an honorarium. But I don't get money from church. Listen, they're not gonna I, catch your they're not gonna catch your hand in the cookie jar, right, Kelvin? No. <laughs> That's right. Good. And, and and I know, let me tell you something. I know some people with so much integrity. I remember this one pastor, a lady was like, Oh, I forgot to put my offering in the in, in the um offering plate. He's like, I don't touch money. He said, no, Yeah, this yeah. is the trustees. Listen, I think I I would hate to go to that church and that sex demon jump out and jump into me. I'll be tight because I don't want to be that. <laughs> I don't want to be that 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 demon. I, like give me give me the other demon that gets money or something like that. So, <laughs> so, money. Little, money. Little money, <laughs> so right, little mama, I mean, she was attacked about two weeks ago about the stuff she was like, uh, what, what she said about kids should get uh, sex changes to the 18 instead of trying to give it to them so young and stuff like that. So she has a, she has a new campaign uh, about hetero, the heterosexual rights movement. 
any thoughts in that, guys? Before we, and then there's a, any thoughts first before I get to the next thing. Well, well, for starters, I would say yes in regard to the children not getting any sex changes until they turn eighteen at least. You know what I mean? I think that's a bare minimum. You know, um, you know, it, it, it's it's not the same as you changing your hair color or something. Yeah. Else. You know what I mean? This is something serious and it's something permanent. You know, and kids go through phases. Mm -hmm. You know, you know what I mean. So we need to, uh, an opportunity to weed out all of that and to make sure that they have a fair grasp on reality, their bodies, what their bodies can do, the capabilities. You know, let them allow them to become the person that they will naturally grow into. You know what I mean. And as as, as far as um, you know, attacks on masculinity and and uh, mas what did you, what it was that a masculine or heterosexual mm -hmm. uh, movement. I don't necessarily know if we need a heterosexual movement since we are, um, that's since we are us heterosexuals are the, um, the, the majority. Yeah. You know what I mean. So, but um, but I will say that we probably need to curtail some of the some of the messaging that we see with regards because our kids we were getting our kids are being are overly sexualized at this point. We were overly remember when we were younger, you would hear that. Our generation was being overly sexualized. You know what I mean? We were talking about sex. I think, I think it's way, way worse than that right now. You know what I mean? I think ours was maybe, maybe our generation. Our generation, our generation was the rape culture. If you look at, listen to the music, you listen, listen to the stuff, uh, the movies was, you had, and stuff like yeah, that. Orkies yeah, it was. Listen, you know, uh, nerds, uh, all that kind man. of stuff. Yeah, but so, it's worse now, man. It's yeah. worse. Everything is worse now. But well, speaking to you said attack, like uh, masculinity and stuff like that, an attack, like assault. There's a bit of people saying that there's assault on a masculinity. So, Jamie, can you play a little clip of the video to show people what we're talking about? You talked about something that I've always said myself, which is it's kind of unfortunate, but you know, you meet a young person, a young guy, you can tell, you know, who, who had a sturdy father who didn't. It's nothing against anybody that didn't have right. that. You can't control right. people. There's right. obviously exceptions, plenty of exceptions. Yeah. Right. right. I mean, I had no father until I was three, and I had a man who stepped into that role <clears throat> and took that job over and did a great job. Without him, I wouldn't be the same man. Now, another person that everyone's been talking about lately, who also ironically didn't uh, have a father in his household. In fact, I'm going to tell you all the whole breakdown in a minute. It ties right into what Chris said. Is this brother right here? You might know him from uh, coming to America, and that is him both on the left and the right. Uh, his name is Jermaine Fowler. Uh, Jermaine uh, was the star of Coming to America. This great, you know, beautiful movie that was just done. And uh, and what happened with Jermaine? Chris was that you know once the movie came out. Uh, everybody was like, oh, well, who's this guy? He's talented. I'm sure the ladies thought he was handsome. You know, he, he's a great actor. No question about his talent. No question about who he is or lifestyle, nothing like that. But but a lot of people were very disappointed uh, to see uh, the, the drag image, which was really fascinating. I mean, you know, Alicia, my fiance, looked at that. She said, he, he's better with makeup than I am. Whoever did it. <laughs> so and, and real quick before now, I'm going to give you a little reference. I want Jamie to play a little snippet of a video when, when they talk about how Hollywood this has a tag on masculinity. James, play the next video real quick. Mm. That's Little Nas X. That's yeah. Little Nas X in his new that? video. Who's that? Who's that? Deadpool? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> That's Little Nas X. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to let y'all. Well, go ahead, Rob. Go ahead. Rob. On masculinity. Yeah. Give me yeah. an attack on Hollywood. The, the thing is, there's definitely something there with Hollywood where. um. They, they always feel they have to put a man in drag and make him believe that he has to go in drag in order to have a successful yeah. career. I don't know if you guys remember when they had, I cannot remember the name of the movie, but it had Patrick Swayze, it had um, Wesley Snipes, and um, what's the Spanish the brother's name? Oh, oh Juan Fu, the movie? Two Juan Fu, that's probably yeah. it. And they had all three of them dressed as women, you know what I'm saying? And then basically they they were telling them that, yo, you guys got to get, you know, dress in drag in order to advance your career. And I think they even came at some, uh, with Will Smith with some scripts in order for him to put, put on drag or whatever. But there is definitely something going on where they feel that you have to dress as a woman in order to advance your career as a man in Hollywood. And I don't I don't know where that comes from. Yeah. But I definitely they, see that it's definitely there. They try to do with Dave Chappelle. Like we had the thing is like, I think we had it back in the day because you had we had Flip Wilson when he played a Geraldine mm -hmm. uh, right. and stuff like you know we had it right. back in the seventies yeah. and in the earlys. But I think right now it's just like they trying to really make this thing the new wave. Like they trying to really just take away masculinity from young men. Yeah. Like yeah. they have the guys wearing the purses and all this other stuff, and they, and they have these women parading like, yeah, go ahead, girl. And I'm like, no. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. And you also see it you, in commercials. You're seeing it in a lot of commercials too. Yeah, like come on, man. Like what do you think the end game is? What do you think? What do you think this this agenda is based on? To me, for me, when they have with young black men, I think they just want to destroy young black men, destroy the black community. Listen, yeah, the, fam the family unit is under attack from the black community. Listen, and the way that they take away their soldiers is the number one thing that they, then the women are, are able to, to conquer about the soldiers. Not, first. That, and, and that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I think, D-May, you got a point with that. I don't think necessarily that it's necess it's an attack on masculinity as a I think, whole. Uh, it might black, be an black, attack black, on black, black men black, specifically. Black yes. masculinity. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I think yes, masculinity. Yes, yeah. Yes, specifically. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, but you know, I mean, yeah, I definitely see it. We all see it, man. We've been around. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Listen, what yeah, you, right. what, what'd you what you destroy the black family unit? Think about this. Yeah, King King and them all their movements came on. Little bit of change for mom and pop. Twenty five cent here, thirty cent here to get those 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 rallies going and stuff like that. The number one thing I think Jay of who said the the biggest source of the uh, uh, power structure is the black family. You destroy the black family. You take away the father. You take them. You put incarcerate them. You put them on drugs. You t turn them to homosexuals. There's no procreation of the black alcohol, family. Alcohol, alcohol too. Al alcohol. So you know that, those kind of things, man. So it's, I'm sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. No, it's it's another tool in the tool chest, man. You know what I mean with regards to destroying black manhood, whether it be police, whether over policing or whatever, whether it be drug culture or whatever mm -hmm. it is that you want to come up with. You know, with uh, the, uh, you know, we had in the '80s, we had HIV, we had drugs, we had everything else. So yeah. now, you know, this is just another tool in the tool chest, man. You know what I mean? So maybe we need to start looking at it like this. You know, um, it's a shame, you know, and I don't know what to tell my kids. But other than, you know, just, you know, I have to really sit down and I got all boys and I got to really sit down and, and tell them what to watch out for. And a lot but of think, the things that you're being told, man, are not but, true. You know. But think about certain things like this. How how can with when you have always pads for women having a cycle? Now they're talking about it's made for women, whatever it is they want to take away the women part. Like what the fuck? Like wait a minute, <laughs> wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. I didn't catch that. I didn't catch that. Wait, yeah. wait, wait. You saying... Sanitary napkins. They want to get rid of the women, whatever it is, some other stuff like it's like it's like whatever the they don't want to reference women. women. Yeah. They want to make it like unisex or just yeah. no. Yeah. But what are men what did men wear for? What are, yeah, exactly. Why would I what why would, what, men what would a man need, need a pad for? Napkin? Yo, like, like, like you said, like on the subway, man, uh, uh, all black men are gay and making, like, yeah, all the black men are gay and making HIV medication. Uh, commercial. That's true. That's why I said the commercial. The <laughs> thing is, any, any, I seen it in the prescriptions. They got the, the, the two gay men or black, two black men. Yeah, like, yeah, why is, it always got to be black men. Yeah, you know? it's so, always, yeah. Yeah, why it, does it have to always be black men? Yeah, that's a good yeah. question. Yeah. Sisters are pissed off. Nicole's pissed yeah. off. Look at that. Sisters are getting yeah. pissed off. Like, no, really, but I, I, I don't get it. I don't, I mean, it's just, it's, let me move on before I say something crazy and get us banned. We won't get another ad. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> in other news, I don't know if you guys saw this, man. There's a, there's a brother that killed this brother named uh, Ty, uh, Tyreek Hudson. He was killed by this, by this white guy, and the white guy claimed mental illness. I don't know, and he got off. He doesn't even going to go to jail. I think he's going to go to a mental hospital. Killed his brother. I'm just tired of white men always can claim mental illness. They never get thrown in prison. I think the guy, even the guy that shot, did the guy that shoot Ronald Reagan, did he ever go to jail that he went to a mental, a mental thing? I don't I'm even not sure. sure. I, mean, I know he's yeah. still in that motherfucker, but it's like it's just like why do they always can fail up? Even when they do the crime, they don't even get the years. They go to they go to a hospital, get a nice little gown, and get some help, play some puzzle games and shit like that. Yeah, well, the <laughs> thing the thing is, those some of those mental institutions they're kind of like set up like jail, and then okay. I think um like it it's 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 not it's not a good looking. I don't know if you've ever seen any one of them, but I mean, you ever been to Creedmoor? Yes. Yeah. No, 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 no. Those places, those places are historically bad. But I think the bigger yeah. issue is, Rodney, I think the bigger issue is, and I think to Dee's point, it's really not what you do, it's who you do it to. Correct. And so we, Correct. we're always minimized. There's always just less value. And so the thing is, I think, first of all, we have, we've got to value ourselves and make other people have value for us also. And I've always believed you got to make people feel it. You've got to make them feel it. There has to be some repercussion to something. If you're not going to get it in the judicial system, then we've got to hurt your wallet. We've got to do something to make you feel it. You know, mm -hmm. because it's human nature. You will do to people what they allow you to do. It's just mm -hmm. human nature. You know what I mean? And so all these things are just plausible when there's other communities. And everybody knows. I used to ask this question um, to friends of mine that were white or of other races. I used to ask the question, um, I would say if you had to, if you were a politician or something like that, and you had to offend a, a, a black person, white person, Jewish person, or gay person, who would you offend? And they're like, I'm not sure. I don't, I'm like, you know exactly who you offend. 
you defend the one who has the least repercussion. Okay. Out of the people I just named, the communities I just named, we know who's at the bottom of the totem pole, and it's usually us. And so that's why people will do whatever to us because they can get away with it. And that's just that's it. What, like that's I, that's like I've, seen, I've seen gentrified neighborhoods that were on the, 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 the verge of being gentrified. I've seen a white woman push a stroller through a CeeLo game, and dudes don't say nothing because they know better. Yeah. They know better. Now, right. I, I say this, the guy that bit that woman on her face or on his eye, he would not have done it to a white woman. I believe that. No. Every five right. of my being. Well, you, 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 like you said, you see it when you're in Harlem and then you have, we have a little gentrification down there. Certain people are not victims of crime by black people. They're going right. to be victim of crimes on their own. People. And I'm not talking yeah. about when Whole Foods get there. I'm talking yeah. about the first generation that comes. The first <laughs> generation comes <laughs> where it's like one or two white people or whatever like that yeah. with a guitar or something and they're going to just stand yeah. the ground. A white person, a white it, person it, is the safest person in the black neighborhood. Yo, <laughs> and the Jewish person. Yeah. Now let me ask you, did you ever see this? Back in South Jamaica, Queens, there used there was this thing. I don't know where they come from. There'd be these white boys, and they wear a, a, a white shirt and a, a oh, tie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They'd be having book bags on. They walk yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, a lot of they saints, right? Yeah, yeah, a lot of they yeah, saints. Yeah, a lot of they saints. That's what they want. Yeah. I knew nobody bothered them. No, yeah, they don't. They never get bothered. They never. Yo, get bothered. I think. I think the church is on 125th Street in Harlem. The big yeah, one, I think, probably is. But I think. They, I think it's on 125th Street. They, they, they can walk through the hood. They walk through the hood all the time. Nobody will bother them. No, no. You know the thing is, I, I've seen some things where so-called people are uh, thugs in their neighborhood or whatever, but you will never see them thug out on a white person. No. Yeah. yeah. So, but you know, how do you know your neighborhood is getting gentrified? Running, bike lanes, little dogs. Strollers and they win flip flops. That's yeah. when you know your neighbor's over. But <laughs> it's shorts in the winter time, right? Shorts in the winter. Winter. winter time. But all the news, like speaking of like racist stuff going on. So it was a, it was a black air, uh, black uh, pilot in the air force. So he flew, flew uh, F twenty two pilot prior to leaves the air force after eleven years of uphill battle against racism. He was facing racism and it, it, they, it, it was a hard time to get through this. Not even of course, he, like he's qualified. He could fly the planes. He could do everything he could do possible. And he's giving him a hard time. Brother said, I'd rather walk away from it. And now he's going to law school. Derek, since your son is now currently in the military, how, what do you, how do you feel? How do you, have you had this conversation with him yet? You know, I have had this conversation with him before. Um, I've had this conversation, you know, just in general regarding race and um, knowing how to navigate um, since he was 16 years old before he ever got in. And then when he got in, I tell him, listen, you know, I just kept it simple. You got to stay away from the weirdos, man. You know, you got a lot of racist weirdos out there. You have mm -hmm. stories of people dying and whatnot, you know, things, you know, in, in basic or, or, you know, on bases or whatever, you know. So we know that racist, and, and even even myself, like when I was coming up, you know, we, we would all hear of stories of, um, you know, racism within, you know, within the, within the you know, within the armed forces. So, I mean, it, I'm not surprised at all that something like this happened, um, something like this went down in, 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 in in the Air Force, and what's really, what's really sad though is to see that young brother. They got a good one. They got one of. I don't think they understood, man. That got one of our best, man. That young man, he has a light about him and an mm -hmm. intelligence and an excellence to him that is just going to be incredible in this world. And for them, for them to do that to him, for him to have that experience is is. I can't even, I can't even explain it, man. You know, but I think that might wind up fueling him. He might wind up and be and do great things as a result, man. You know what I mean? Because he did mention, you know, taking his experiences and, in that and going off and becoming a lawyer. So I think they mm -hmm. might have created a monster. You know what I mean? Rich, to mm -hmm. be honest with you. So so yeah, but it's it's it's, it's just a shame, man. You know. Well, the, the the thing is, um, yeah, I do think that um. When you get that wake up call and things get brought to light with you in certain organizations, yeah, you're right, Derek. He's probably going to go on and he's probably going to do a lot of things and yeah. try to take on maybe breaking up a lot of racist stuff. Yeah. But the thing is, you know, police department is also a paramilitary organization, right? And um, racist as well. The thing is that that PF um, 22 pilot that's a very prestigious. Yeah, yeah, unit for him to be yes. f-22 i'm sorry f-22 that's the baddest plane we got in service man yeah so there's a, a there's a but people don't know there. that it's a it's a battle plane i mean it's a battle plane. yeah yeah that's a very prestigious yeah. unit to be part of so the thing is certain people in that prestigious unit want to keep that unit a certain way yeah. and i used yeah. to see it in the police department as well 
So the thing is, I saw the interview with the brother and he said something that I said a while back. They want you to assimilate to them. Right. You have to conform to them. They want mm -hmm. you to change them. They don't want you act as they would say, acting black, behaving black, or looking black. You know what I mean? They don't want that in there. So the yeah. thing is, they do a lot of different things to keep it that way. Then when they experience some sort of um, controversy or some sort of scandal with racism, what they'll do is they'll stuff a person in there of color that's right. going to go in there and play the same game. Right. So it never gets changed. Right. They it's it's kind of like the fire department. They hold on to that culture too. You don't mm -hmm. you don't see a lot of brothers going to the fire department because they make sure they keep that culture tight. They're not going to relinquish it. Yeah. And Kelvin, you, and Kelvin yeah. you have a nephew in the service. So how well, do you feel? Man? Well, and not only in the service, in the air force. So mm -hmm. you know, when I was a kid, I always heard stories. My grandfather was drafted into the navy, and um, he had to deal with so much racism that when my father enlisted in the Air Force, he stopped speaking to him for a year. Uh, my father, my grandfather was that upset at my father because mm. he knows how racist the military can be, just like uh, so many other institutions in this country. Uh, so, my, you know, much like uh, Derek had the conversation with his son, we've been having this ongoing conversation since from the time you're able to talk, you learn about racism, you learn that there's opposition, you learn that you're swimming upstream, that there's a current against you. So I, I think the biggest thing that any parent could do or guardian is make a person aware. So my nephew is very, very well aware. What I look at any situation is you get what you can get out of it. You take the meat and you spit out the bones and you learn how to move within the system. I think black people in general, um, we have no problem with uh, this this game. The issue is the fact that the rules always keep changing. That's the thing. It always changes with us to keep moving the goalposts. So whatever it is, we're used to playing. We used to coming into the game already down. We're used to already, you know, being at a deficit and things like that. The, the Like I said last week, I don't buy into the red, white, and blue. I never did. Yeah. I never did because I've mm -hmm. always believed that race supersedes that. It trumps that. It's other people's agenda. You know what I mean? And so you have to understand that. I hate to see any man have to leave a situation and walk away from it because there's something also to be said about being able to stand and try to make it through it. But he got so frustrated, probably, that he had enough of it. But, yes, I'm not shocked that you have racism or sexism or any other ism in the military. It's just there. Yeah. 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 And speaking of more racism, and well, this time it's a little different. In Boston, if everyone never know, they never had any person of color let alone a woman, as, as the mayor. They always had somebody of Irish descent or of Italian descent. But since the person that was currently mayor, was mayor now, moved on and worked inside the Joe Biden administration, administration we have the new mayor, her name is Kim, J uh, what's, oh, somebody texted me at the same time. Kim Jamie is sworn in as the first woman in, in, in a black mayor of Boston. Guys, any thoughts on it? Anybody that knows with Google the sister, she's been doing this for a long time. She had a baby at 16, that didn't stop her. She showed black girl magic again. Well, I'm gonna say black woman magic again. So they they she they they have her considered as acting mayor, right? No, I think she's mayor no. sworn as mayor. Okay, because doesn't mayor. she? No, I mean educate me on this because I I don't I'm not really savvy yeah. on the whole thing. But the thing is, she she's finishing out the the remaining term of the previous yeah. mayor, right? Correct. So then she okay. has to run again. Then she, she has to run again. Her. How much time? Yeah. Do y'all know how much time is left on her, on her, on his term? I, I I don't know. I, I got to Google it. I don't I don't know. If you give me a second, I'll try to look it up. Well, Jamie, right? He's been in the background. He might be able to look it up and tell. Yeah, because that that plays a role. Because <laughs> you know, I was just I just want to know how long she's actually going to be mayor. Because she actually makes some changes. She's going to be lying there long enough to actually make an effect. You know, oh, just well, I, text. I, I, she's only made it to Monday. No. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be honest with you. To me, it, I, I looked at it almost like uh, what President Obama and, and um. Uh, Rodney, Derek, and, and Dee and I were joking, saying that we realized that we got a black president in the United States before you had a black president of the United Negro College Fund. So we were <laughs> we laughing. We yo, laughing that, that's that. the truth. Yo, Kelvin, yeah. you said that, man. Yeah. It, hurt, it hurt me. It made me laugh at the same time. I was like, damn. Yeah, and you know, you know, it's interesting. To me, in this case, I look at certain things like benchmarks. So to me, the fact that she was able to do it in one of the most racist areas in the country, you know, you might as well be in Mississippi North somewhere. <laughs> My mother, who was from South Carolina, is like, don't ever go to Boston. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? And so so it, it, to me, some of these things, I, I think it helps to let certain people see that it is possible, that it, that it could be done. I think that that helps. I don't know that the first wave or generation of that will be able to be an instrument of change. 
just mm -hmm. the fact that you did that, that may be the change that sparks someone else to come and take it to another level. So I just like to say congratulations and um, it's commendable. Uh, but you know, the sad thing is when we get a situation like this, sometimes you're apprehensive about celebrating because you always feel like a person is being set up in some way. And, yeah. it's, and it's sad that we have to feel that way. It's sad that we are always on the, the reactive side or the defensive side, even when something should be celebratory, you still have to look at it kind of with, with, with a raised eyebrow. And that's the sad thing that 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 people have done to us because we're always we you, you know we always get the impression that nobody is rooting for us mm. that nobody like 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 there there's still people that say well they finally gave it to Obama because the country was so bad you know what yeah. I mean do you remember that 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 yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. That, that yeah. So Jamie just, and Jamie just notified is it uh, her term into 2022. Okay, okay, so yeah, so she's a symbol, she's a symbol for a little while then, you know. What right, I mean? yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, right, yeah. And, and I don't know. I don't. I think what we're talking about is, you know, what is what is most effective. You know, her being a symbol or her being able to actually make some change. You know, and 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 and, and I don't know. You know, I, I think um I think we got to just deal with her being a symbol at this point. You know, the I, thing, and I think that, 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 the I think thing is this. My issue is, and you said it, Calvin, before I actually said it. We are talking about Boston. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, the thing is, like, awesome. the sad thing about that, and just like the brother that's a senator and, and one in Georgia, like they already got to start campaigning to run again for next year. So that, it's yeah. hard to make a lot of yeah. changes when you yeah. just when you we, try. Right yeah. now, when the day she thing. walks in, she's campaigning for you yeah. know what I mean. For yeah. next year. Oh wow! So you right. talking about a city? You talking about a city that their basketball team remained in white for a long time? Yeah, because I mean, yeah, because I mean, like, I mean, the Celtics just I don't when when did the Celtics really get black when Kelvin Garnett and them went to freaking um other than that they had a had a huge 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 um team of yeah. of white players yeah. yeah man so but speaking of uh, since we're on politics right now down in Georgia Georgia uh, Georgia law lawmaker lawmaker as well the governor did behind closed doors like every uh man going a white man going out of power did some shit behind closed doors and son. <laughs> legislation to eventually again once again this so keep black people and brown people from voting jamie can you tell people a little bit of the video what happened are you serious no you are not oh, represent no. she's not under arrest A Georgia lawmaker was arrested after knocking on the door of the governor's office and interrupting him as he signed elections legislation, which critics say suppresses voting rights. According to them, if you support voter ID for absentee ballots, you're a racist. According to them, if you believe in protecting the security and sanctity of the ballot box, you're a, quote, Jim Crow in a suit and tie, end quote. State Representatives Erica Thomas and Park Cannon were among roughly 10 protesters outside Governor Brian Kemp's office as he was signing the controversial bill and delivering remarks. You just arrested a state representative. I'm done. And then you're gonna tell me I'll be next? I'll be next for doing what? For standing for the voters of Georgia? The Republican-sponsored law includes new restrictions on voting by mail, like requiring photo IDs for absentee ballots and limiting when and where ballot drop boxes may be accessed. It also increases government control over elections, including allowing the legislature to appoint the chair of the state election board and replace county elections officials deemed underperforming. They want the Democrats and voting rights advocates say the law will disproportionately disenfranchise voters of color. I heard all I need to hear. Yeah. <laughs> Thoughts. It, it, Let me tell you it, something. It's, it's just it, just it's, functionally ahead, alone, yeah. how are you going to have a voter ID for an absentee ballot? How is that? That's not even possible. <laughs> That's not you know, even possible. You, got how, you, got, you, you scan in a copy of ID. I don't know. But here goes another thing. Think about this. When did they start giving people suspending people license that are black and brown communities now you have no id that's valid to get a voter registration card to get into um to get into the place yeah mm -hmm. well, well, you know, the what the thing thanks thanks john calvin um what I, I we witnessed a riot at the capitol where after it was over not one person was arrested but this black woman was arrested for knocking on the door 
Yep. Right. And she well, it was running two, all through the two offices. Fel- two felony charges. That's and hit up that hit her with two felony charges. Also, they were that, running all through the offices, smearing feces on the walls yeah, and yeah. carrying on. And all. Yeah, it was crazy. The other thing is too in that in that law he signed, it's illegal to give anybody food or water while waiting on the line to vote. Yeah. 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 That's insane. That is insane. So basically, what's that to deter people from vote um, from voting because it's because it's hot in Georgia and when they stand online they. You know they they can't have no water. That that's that's just amazing. It, it, it's might backfire because every time, like Kelvin said a, a few minutes ago, every time they move the goalposts further and further, we still score the touchdown though. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like whatever you're gonna do, it, like, it motivates us. I don't think they know the fuck they fucking with because you brought us over and changed, right? We still we still here. You did Jim Crow to us. We still here. Housing discrimination still here. Crack heroin. We still here. So you keep motivating us. Yeah. They should start learning how. Let me learn how to work with these people. But they don't try to do that. They try to, that's the, no, that's the point that you, the point you just raised. That's what I want to talk about. And and I look at it like this: the, the the strides that we made. Think about it. So there was a time when you had to deal with these people, and you weren't able to read, you weren't able to write, and we overcame so many things. And it's sad that we still have to overcome. But one thing that you have to say about them: whenever they lose. They put the 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 gas pedal to the floor. We mm-hmm. don't do that. We don't do yeah. that. In other words, the Democrats don't do that. Black people don't do that. In other words, when you have somebody down on the canvas, pin them. Yeah. They lost for Trump, and that is the Empire Strikes Back. Now they going <laughs> off, and, 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 and now what we've got to do is increase. Because what happens is, I never get. My father said something years ago. My father moved to um, Long Island in '74. He said everything that we worked for. As black people in the 60s and 44, we gave it back in the 70s. Every single thing. When they let you live in the suburbs, when they let you do this, that, and the third, then we got laxed, right? And that's why, here, I'll give you a Bentley. Oh, I'll give you a record contract. I'll give I'll give 10 of y'all where black people will be millionaires. Now the struggle is over. And that's the reality. And once we started thinking that, then this is what happens. And, and unfortunately, people need to realize that the fight has just changed, but it's still there. Yeah, Brad, uh, Jamie, bring up what Brad just said. Because Brad and I talk about this a lot. There we go. The last wave of, uh, of, of let's say white men, Brad. You say white men. Oh, you did say white men. 65 three old white men who were the last generation before civil rights laws are making final stands before. Yeah, that's it. They try to make their final stands. They're digging in deep, and that's what they're trying to do. And like, you know, they see that they know the world's going to change. And they're like, damn, we're going to get wiped away from it. You're not going to get wiped away from history, white man. You're not. We're going to talk about how bad you were. <laughs> so you will be marked in history. Yeah, you know, so. you know you're gonna be some there's gonna be some prices to pay, man. You know, and it's yeah. gonna be a price, but yeah. you know, but you know, we're gonna remember it, but damn, you ain't gonna be white yeah. pay, man. And then after yeah. a while we all be cool. Damn, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> cool. Stop tripping, you know? Yeah, yeah. But they they scared of Stacey Abrams, bro. That's just a bad man. Yeah, oh, that's, that's why they gotta the change these rules. That's why they changed in the rules. They, they might name they the next happen again. again. They might name the next hurricane after her. <laughs> 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 Hurricane Stacy. Oh, oh, Brad, Brad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they mad at Stacy, man. Stacy, hope, hope she got the Nation of Islam protecting or something down there, man. They gonna come for that stuff, man. You know. So I don't know if you got some sort of everyone sort of August off state uh, uh, trooper pulls over his brother. He's had a U-Haul truck. His father is a lawyer. <laughs> what is that? Rodney, you got people selling my name wrong too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I started. I started a trend. Oh, man, I started a trend. You got me crying. That, that was that was funny. But in Arkansas, <laughs> they had a, Arkansas, they had a state trooper pull over this brother who had a U-Haul. Look at he's moving his stuff, and he went on. He went on and called his father. His father was a lawyer, also a judge. The state trooper said. Oh, the guy looked like he's nervous and he think he has like drugs on him, or whatever. He's gonna call the dogs. Rodney, I wanna go to leave with you first on this because you former police officer and stuff like that. If you saw you saw the video, what do you think and went wrong? And like what was his he had no probable cause. And the father was yeah, trying to right. tell him what, what what's the reason? Well, the thing is when I did watch the video, um, and it seems that he was pulled over originally for a traffic infraction, if I'm not mistaken. And um it seemed to me that he was fishing. He he was trying to evade the situation to the point where he could get a search of that mm-hmm. U-Haul truck. And then from what I understand, they found nothing. You nothing. They mean? put the dogs, they put the dogs on them and everything. Yeah, they start, I think they said they searched the um they searched the truck for like two hours and yeah, they found they broke, nothing. And they, and they broke this, the stuff up and everything. This is a this is a typical officer overzealous trying to find something that is not there. And the thing is, he wouldn't have did that if that was a white man pulled over in that U-Haul truck. He, he wouldn't. His his suspicion wouldn't be as high 
Now, the thing is, too, he's trying to use maybe his his nervous behavior as an excuse to go up to the next level to be able to search that U-Haul. But the thing is, a lot of people are nervous around cops. A lot of people look, look are nervous. But we, we have good reason. Yes. 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 Excellent yes. reason. Yes. <laughs> Excellent <laughs> reason. In 20, mm -hmm. Let's review 2020 alone by itself. Not let even go back in history. The show, every black man has PTSD when they get stopped by the cops. Yeah, as soon as yeah. you light, you're like, oh, shit. Because you know, yeah. this might be my last moments on earth. Even you think when about you kids, in a woman, a, everything yeah. you think about, man. Absolutely. So, Being around police is not an abnormal behavior. It's not. It's not an abnormal behavior. Right. That's yep, so, I agree. Yeah. So it's, a, it's um. But the next thing I want to talk about, since we're on the topic of police, New York City Police Department officers are no longer protected by the civil rights law after city council passes police reform legislation. So we can yeah. sue these damn cops now. About, about time, that, about man. <laughs> now we talking. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Now we're yeah. talking. Well, now it's time. I think that's going to put a him in a lot. Of, well, we'll see how it happens. We'll see how it kind of progresses through the legal system and everything, how that operates. But Listen, I think it's a great first start, man. You know what I mean? At least like curtailing some of the stuff that's happening, man, because it, I, I, and, and it always stuck in my pro a little bit, man. You see somebody like, why can't you sue the actual individual police officer? You know what I mean? Well, to me, you that would can. be incredible deterrent. You know, no, you can't. The thing is, officers were getting sued way before this. The thing is, it's not being publicized because they don't want the public. No, Max, where you at? They don't. You, you, know, you in? They, Sam said he don't see you. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I was trying to make sure, I'm trying to get in touch with our guests to make sure, but go ahead. Sorry, you say. Um, no, we, we were always able to sue police officers, right? Mm, in the past mm. and now. The thing is, they didn't public, they don't publicize, I mean, how many lawsuits that the city pays out as a result of police officers. Mm. Actually, they pay out a lot of lawsuits as a result of police yeah. officers. Okay. This, this law now will make it when an officer gets sued. The city won't have to pay for the police officer. This oh. police officer is going to have to pay on his own. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's what I'm talking about. Right. That's, that's, that's it. But the thing is, yeah. in other words, the city is not going to indemnify the officer anymore, right. especially when the officer has done something reckless and malice. You know what I'm right. saying? So now, basically, you can go out to the officer personally. But what the officers are going to start doing is they're going to get personal insurance. That's what they're going to wind up having to do. Wow. Yeah, but you so, you can always let me tell you something. I, I worked 22 years, I saw a lot of lawsuits, and like I said, they most of the time the city will settle out when things look bad and they'll give somebody maybe 20, 30 grand, 15 grand, and people take it. But there's hundreds so of money, lawsuits. Man. It's not, it's not. But the thing is the city takes advantage yeah. of minorities knowing that you need that money. Right. Right. So they you'll say take, you'll settle so quick. Right. Yeah. So you'll settle very quickly when you yeah. actually have a case that you would actually profit much more if you were able to stick it out. But sometimes people need that money and they'll take that 10 or 15 to settle out. And those are the cases that you don't know about. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. So so in other words, don't paint it as if somebody is looking out for you. The city is looking out for the city. Correct. Yeah. Now there you go. There you go, Calvin. I got it right. All right. All right. <laughs> no, the city's looking out for itself. They're not, they don't, they don't. And I'm sure they probably, like I said, they, I don't know the numbers. I'm sure the city did the numbers and say, we pay out umpteen millions of dollars a year as a result of police incidents. You know what I mean? So they said, you know, some of these cases we shouldn't have settled on. On because the police officer was wrong, something he shouldn't have did, something something that he didn't follow the regulations or code, and we have to pay out on it. And they settled. So they just basically, uh, and it, it's also going to keep the police officers in check too. They're going to think a lot about think before they do certain things. Right. Yeah. All right. That's yeah. so, Another another news. Uh, New York State, New York City, is going to be uh, going to legalize marijuana. So with that said, legalize an hour at a time. <laughs> So everybody gonna be blowing up now. Buy it. Buy it now, man. Let me let me say this. Let me say this. I I really really cannot stand the smell of marijuana. I can't. I never. Oh, could, it smell right? like mm. no, the new shit smell like asshole. You but let me let me, <laughs> let me let me let me say this though. I I recognize this and the gambling in the, so many of these cities are broke. I don't think it's probably it's probably not a coincidence that coming off of a pandemic. And um, one of the worst economic downturns ever uh, in the city's history, 
that we're going to that. I think especially the neighboring cities, I mean, uh, states, Jersey, I believe, I believe has already been ahead with that. It's, it's obvious that they're going to do this. I think the whole country is going to do this. And, um, you know, if there's, if there's, if it's going to benefit people's pensions and things like that, it may be something that was worth them doing um, as a state. Cause really New York operates on, I believe a little better than about a $93 billion a year um, budget. And so, what we had the last year was just so catastrophic. We got businesses closing in the city. We got people leaving New York in droves. I believe over a quarter of a million people have moved out of New York since last year. So I think they're going to try to do anything they can just to get revenue and to rebuild. A lot of businesses left too, Calvin. They moved to yes. Florida, Miami. Yeah. yeah. The city left a lot of businesses Absolutely. To after COVID. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I think, no, it's yeah, I remember yeah. looking at um, the pictures of like the New York just being a ghost town. Yep. <laughs> Listen, I'm glad. I just hope more black and brown people get they have the opportunity to take advantage because we we built this we built that industry, you know, and, I, and we should be the first ones to get dibs on it. I think anybody had charges before they when they got arrested for marijuana, so they should yeah. be expunged. Mm -hmm. And you know those kind of things. Like they got to make sure we get, if we got to get the loans. Don't make it where you got to have a certain amount of cash and to get into the into the game. You know, like Cure Leap and all these other companies like that. I think I just want you to be able to like brothers and sisters that on the ground level that would take twenty years or whatever for this marijuana stuff to to be able to to be get the first one to cash in on. It. You know, I like yeah. it. if it's CBD medical marijuana, the regular smoking the trees, whatever it is, they get, should be the first ones, first good. Yeah, let's not miss this with that. Yeah. And then, yeah. and then the thing is, if you you can't get involved in it like that by maybe opening a business. Think of it from a stock perspective. Okay. Yeah. Marijuana, you're gonna you. We have some people have the opportunity of being in on the ground floor on marijuana stocks because now New York is legalized for the first time. Mm -hmm. So. I'm not telling people what to do. Right. I'm just telling you what I'm going to do. And I'm and, re and, and, re and, re and, and any business right, you're just basically telling people to research it. Research yeah. whatever, because different marijuana companies may be some fraudulent ones, maybe some really mm -hmm. good ones. Mm -hmm. But research any any of the marijuana companies, you know, and stuff like that. But anybody like I would people that they like, had things against marijuana. As a person got his got my hit by a car, and Brad, I want to see no jokes about this. I had to start using uh, using marijuana oil my legs and stuff like that to ease the pain and stuff like that. So, but um. You know, it's another thing that, uh, uh, that I want to um, talk about that's been recently in recent times is more black people getting into firearms, right? So I'm a big advocate of firearms. I believe in black people should protect themselves, but people take it as hobbies and stuff like that. But this is like the new thing because we saw what happened in 2020. A lot of people started getting scared. Oh, hold on a second. Eh, hold on. Can't go to that now because I just got, got a little technical issues going on. So I'm going to move on to the next topic. I want to... I want to bring in our next guest, but I want to, I don't want to talk about that yet until I can bring it to our, our next guest. So, uh, Jamie, can you play a little video of the racist lady that, that uh, helped, uh, messed up the customer, I mean, had the bad customer service? No, no, she actually was the bad customer, had great customer service, but she was the bad person. Can you play the video? I think they call the uh, Bagel Becky or something like that now. <laughs> Yeah, that guess. You just said I don't look at you like that. How do you see how I'm looking at you? Excuse me, can I just serve? If you don't want to serve, I'll let you go. If you want to serve her, serve her. If like not, I, let I, you I, go. Take her out. Here, That's a, man, ma hello, ma'am. He's not going to serve you, so please leave. Why? No, excuse me. Hello, 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 hello. Now you need to go. That's what he is. Excuse me, ma'am. Hello, ma'am. You need to go. You heard it. Let me call the cop because this might have been very short. It doesn't affect me that you're not going to serve me. Excuse me, ma'am. Hello, ma'am. You need to go. That's what he is. Excuse me, ma'am. Hello, ma'am. You need to go. You're just calling my nigga. That's what you just said. I can call you whatever I want. Yo, the baby crying, man. Feel the energy, man. That's crazy. Listen, the chick has half black kids, but let's let I'll let y'all go first before I say something. Yeah, no, nah, I, I, I was just sitting there thinking that watching the video. I'm looking at the baby in the stroller. I said, that baby is either got some black in her or him, or that baby's got a serious tan, you know. But that baby looked like he got some black in her. I mean, the mother looked. The mother looked like she got some black in her. That's what happened, you know. What yeah, I mean? well, she seemed like she's a head case. That's what the mother seemed like. Yeah, she's, she's a head, head case. case. 
He's a Kelvin, you look like you were just ready to say something, Kelvin. I no, because sure. I remember, I remember having cousins that would 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 beat somebody and stomp them out for saying their name wrong. I can yeah. only imagine. Like I can only imagine. People don't know what I mean. What words can do out here? Because you say certain things around certain people. There's certain people kill you behind stuff like that. Mm -hmm. People have this thing about disrespect, and I think people have this thing where they just free to say whatever. People don't realize. I mean, that's just very dangerous to be that comfortable to just just say a slur like that. And again, my point: you will not say that about a Jewish group. You're not the guy that said something a Jewish slur. He got traded from the Heat, went to Oklahoma, and got cut. That's what <laughs> the only. He got cut. He's not in the NBA right now. That's just what it is. But anybody wow. will say whatever about or to us. And I'm telling you, that's very, that that's a loaded word. I, I do think hip hop handles it wrong. I'm not gonna say it being front like they don't, but I'm saying at the end of the day, groups can say certain things about themselves yeah. that other people can't say. And I think it's very, very dangerous. And if he would have jumped over that counter and snapped and went off, whatever like that, he'd have been arrested. But people don't realize it's not worth the risk. You yeah, know? I can, yeah, I can remember a time, man, when we had to be a little bit more responsible for what we said. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Because, you oh, know, yeah. you could catch it out here. You know what oh. I mean? And I think we are in this weird, in, in this little weirdo internet world right now where people can just, from the comfort of their home, just kind of just say whatever they want to whoever they want, and, and they have incredible accessibility. And now you think you can carry it out in, into the world. And um, I don't know what's happening right now. You know what I mean? I just can't understand it. I know back in the days when I was coming up, there's no way that little, that little oh. Becky could have got that off on anybody that I know. You know what yeah. I mean? It just couldn't yeah. happen. So I don't know some, people, yet. some people just said the father apologized, but she's I don't know if she ever apologized. And like I think you said, she felt entitled by being around the father. He's probably saying it all the time that she could be able to say this. That yeah. shit was just dead wrong. Like the thing is, she started taking the. I started looking at her Instagram page. She had stuff on and. Uh, St. Patrick's Day saying uh, about niggas and stuff like that and all this yeah, other stuff. Exactly. And I keep trying to tell you, black people, stop going to these damn things. I keep trying to mm -hmm. tell you. But that's another subject. <laughs> <laughs> that's another subject. I'm not going to get into that. But, like, this is why everybody can't be invited to the cookout. Yeah. Like, yeah. This, you know, oh, and, quick to invite people to the cookout, man. Yeah. So okay. it's like, it, yeah, it's like you got to stop it. Like, you know, and then, like, part of that dance it is, like, I don't want to wear a mask. I'm going to call this man a nigga. I don't know why this shit never happens around me. <laughs> I think we know why. But she's a I child think, of God. I, 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 I really don't know. No, no. It, she, like I said, that's my favorite song of the year was "Try Jesus, Don't Try Me." She, <laughs> she, had, she had a better chance with Jesus. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I just can't say it. And I, I tell these brothers all the time, like you know, they go to these Beckys. Stop it. Stop it. But see, <laughs> see, see, this is going to go back, and we're going to have to revisit this. In other words, there are certain communities, because of their ownership and their prowess, you won't try them, but everybody will do it with us. That's the bottom line. Everybody yeah. will do it with us, and that's why I'm saying somewhere along the line, you've got to lay a foundation. I'll tell you one thing. If you say something that's anti-Semitic, you, you better say it on the inside. i tell you that. I tell you, yeah. if, the world here, if the world here, your business is going to fold up. I can tell you that. And they made it like that because they made sure the way we've been downtrodden, we're not having it no more. We have to take the same approach. Yeah, we yeah. have to take you're the right, same you're approach. Right. I agree with you a thousand percent on that. But like, mm -hmm. listen, guys, we about to, we have that time up here. We got to take our commercial break. We got some new sponsors. So, Jamie, can you bring us to a new sponsors? I'm Dawn Kelly, daughter of Joan Kelly, granddaughter of Margaret Ackerman and founder and CEO of The Nourish Spot. I'm a native New Yorker, born in Harlem and raised in Queens. The community connects to The Nourish Spot through a number of ways, one of which is through my family's 60 years of long-standing roots in this community. My grandfather uh, purchased the first home in our family here in Jamaica. We connect to the community through our employees. We have a number of young black and brown uh, men and women that mask up and glove up to come to work every day so that we can assemble 
customized fruits and vegetables into what customers want. And so I'm really happy that we have such a great team and I thank them every day for their dedication and fortitude. COVID-19 has caused a lot of small businesses like myself to close. And so we're very happy that what we've been able to do is pivot. And so instead of allowing individuals to walk into our store, we have set up a, a QR code, we've set up a curbside pickup, and we have a heavier reliance on our food delivery service app partners. So in my opinion, resilience means, you know, taking challenges by the horn, if you will, and kind of wrangling them and navigating them in order to continue, uh, in our case, serving the community. The Nourish Spot is all in, all in Queens. Listen, I'm glad, so happy that some new sponsors. My mouth has not got us in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, you got to get, huh? get the credit score up, too, so they can take their stuff out, their mama name. <laughs> oh, their baby name. Yeah, no, yeah their listen, baby mama name. Yes, I'm glad we got some new sponsors. I mean, Facebook jail. I'm, I'm not in jail this week, so I'm good. I, I ain't saying nothing crazy to anybody. But now, this is a segment I've been waiting to talk about for a while. I was talking about like blacks and guns. I like to go a lot on weekends, start shooting and stuff like that, learning more about safety, firearm safety rules and stuff like that. So we have the pleasure tonight to bring on one of my dearest friends since high school, since man in the eight eighties, man. It's showing our age right here. Sam, can you bring in the studio tonight? My man Max, fly Haitian guy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> did you have to say we were from the eighties, man? <laughs> like I need any more, man. We from we from the eighties, man. That's the the great era of from the Wallaby life. era, as we like That's to right. call it. Yeah, yeah, yeah I walk yeah, by, I walk yeah. by the clock store today. That's so funny you say that. I walk by the clock store today. Yeah, I didn't you pick up you know, raise raise um Wallabies. <laughs> yeah, those were dope. Those were dope. Yeah, those are crazy. Yeah. Those crazy. Yeah, nice so stuff. Max, man, welcome to Let's Chop It Up, man. We glad you got your here tonight, man. To tell about tell people about guns and stuff like that. So Max, what made you first get into want to get involved in the gun lifestyle? Yo, D, it started real simple, man. Um, bought a crib out on Southside with my ex-wife and stuff like that. And that blackout did it. That was the first time I realized that, you know what? My safety is my responsibility. Because before then, it was kind of like, yeah, you know, we call the police. But nobody calling the police at that time. So that's when mm -hmm. I started realizing, like, oh, shoot, I'm in charge of a family. And what am I going to do? No lights is on. And, you know, we in Southside. So mm -hmm. after that, you know, it was just like, Irene came around, Sandy came, and then I started to just realize and started getting on YouTube and watching a lot of these preppers, you know, these little guys, they kind of crazy or whatever. But my, my thought process was just like, listen, if these guys are studying this thing and something goes down, at least I'm going to get the heads up and know what to do. So I started just, you know, picking up stuff, water, extra batteries, because it's the same thing. Every time there's a storm, it's the same thing we need, you know what I'm saying? Outside of um, COVID, where we needed toilet paper, which I didn't see coming, but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that was different for me, but I'm like, you know what? It makes sense. Nobody wants to be uncomfortable. So, but, no, from there, but nobody thought nobody thought about using the toilet paper. Nobody thought about maybe I could just take a rag and wash it out. Just because, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. ran out of toilet paper. You know what I'm yeah. Like, nobody thought about that. Like, yeah, I got to just. Wash do do this we rag. pass that nowadays, man? I know, man. I know, I know, man. I know, I know. So, Max, Max, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, Gazi. Max, Max, let me ask you a question. What type of responsibility is it owning a gun? I'm sure there's some people that that don't know what it entails, um, because I used to hear people say certain people change. They get a, a little more, you know, confident when they have a gun with them because they don't understand what it entails. So tell us a little bit about what it means to be a responsible gun owner. Listen, a responsible gun owner means that, one, you know, the four safety rules of handling a firearm. 
you know, which is keep your finger off the trigger, never point at anything that you ain't ready to kill or destroy. You know what I'm saying? And you got to keep it a lock compartment. There's certain criteria that you should always, always do. And it, like I said, keeping it locked, number one, first and foremost, and having a healthy respect for it. You know what I'm saying? Right. Mm. Gotcha. Mm. So, Max, since you, live, you say you live in South, 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 well, at the time you lived in South Jamaica, Queens. So, how did, how, what's the process of getting that permit? Because New York State, it's probably, in New York City, it might be one of the hardest places to get a firearm. So, can you walk people through the process? And I know how long it's taken for my permit to come. So yeah. <laughs> you won't the listen. Process. That's why we would have been. Listen, I, I, was calling, I was sick, man. A lot of things happened, man. But then also with that taking so long in New York State, they had an article in New York Post how they were discriminating against black and brown people because more of us started uh, applying for these things. So, but Max, go ahead. Tell us uh, how long it takes and how hard it is. Okay, so it's really not as hard as people think it is. It's an application process, and the majority of the application you can fill it out just by its little simple things: your date of birth, your name, your social how many different addresses you had. Um, you got a couple of questions if you had infractions with police officers, if you had, you know, we caught any cases and stuff like that. You gotta be honest. And I'll tell you honest, do you know the thing that, cause I'm, a, I'm also a consultant that helps people get, you know, their permit. One thing that I realized is that, yo, no one has insurance under there where they really live. And I had to tell a couple of people like, yo, you gotta change your, um, you gotta change your license back. You can't be in North Carolina and saying that you hear it doesn't work. You got to come clean. This is an FBI background check. Usually it takes seven to eight months. But now because of COVID, we might be looking at a year and a half. It all changes. And as far as the discrimination, I see it coming. Of course, look, all of a sudden, Joe Biden is passing out all these gun um, laws that he wants to put into place. But think about it. We are the number one new gun owners in America. All of a sudden, now the, the rules of engagement want to change. Now they really press to hurry up, hurry up. Let's knock this out. Let's put this through. I'm going to do an executive. Um, uh, he's going to pass that through executive order. So this mm. is what we're dealing with now. Yeah. So, Max, yeah. go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, Rob. Yeah, Max, um, you know, I'm, I'm a gun owner myself and everything. But I, when people talk to me, you just said you was a consultant. Do you find when you consult with people about purchasing a firearm, that they want the biggest firearm that they can possibly <laughs> buy, like a like a goddamn bazooka or something like that. Do they, you find the, that the a des- lot? Yes, the Desert Eagle. And let yeah. me tell you one one thing that I always say. This is the biggest pro- um, not problem, but misconception. They'll say like, "Oh, I want to get a, a gun for wifey. I'm gonna get a little gun." I said, "You better not. That that little gun gonna bark. You need something that's gonna um, handle the recoil." So the but what I tell them is this: It's like do you want an SUV on a bumpy road or a sports car? Correct. Because the SUV is going to just absorb all of the shocks. So I said, stop talking this little gun stuff for women and stuff like that. You need something that's going to absorb the recoil. But, yeah, there's guys who want to shoot a Desert Eagle, which makes no sense. Because by the time, you know, to, to get that second shot off, it's not happening, man. A 9 millimeter, you get shot four or five times before you let off, like, two shots with a Desert Eagle. And, yeah. I, and that's the truth. Yeah. yeah, it just it looks good on camera. Yeah, yeah, it, does. Does. it looks, it looks yeah. good on camera. It looks good on TV. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's Hollywood. It's Hollywood. It's Hollywood. But now, yeah. you no, know, when women get into it, like women, I know women like about the fashion and stuff like that. They have pink guns, light blue guns. It, can you have those in certain states? The colors is it color color laws? Ah, very good question. New York City, no, you cannot have any colored gun. It has mm-hmm. to be either like black or that stainless steel comes in. No colors. So what they said is they don't want to be mistaken as a toy and it's real. New York City has the worst gun laws that makes no sense. I mean, some of the stuff that they really try to like clamp down on is looks, cosmetic stuff. Nothing really that's tangible. Like you'll have a dude who has a uh, a AR-15 and it's like, oh, the evil gun, right? But then you'll have somebody who has a Ruger uh, Mini-14. Guess what? They shoot the same bullet at the same rate of speed. But the the Mini 14 has a wood stock. So it looks like grandfather's rifle. And they think it's something super evil. And one of the misconceptions I always tell people is like, stop listening to the media. There are no assault rifles out here in these streets. Assault rifle basically is an automatic weapon. Like you pull the trigger one time, four bullets come out. That No one has that. That's been banned since 1980. 
So a lot of the stuff that you hear on the media is talk about, oh, well, you know, assault rifle. And they say you could, no, you pull the trigger one time, one bullet comes out. You pull it a second time, another bullet comes out. It's nothing, you know, they, they play this game. And I, I tell people all the time, it's like, you got an H2 Hummer and a military Hummer. They look alike. Can they do the same thing? No. Well, it's not. It's the AR-15 is just a popular gun. Like, you know how the Honda Civics and Honda Accords were back in the days where guys would take them and turn them into a Ferrari mm -hmm. in no time? Mm -hmm. That's what it is with the AR-15. It's modular. So guys customize it and stuff like that. But all that stuff does, it doesn't change the rap, the, the speed of the bullet comes out, nothing. So it's just like I said, it's a lot of myths that the media runs with because they want to keep you unarmed. And to me, a responsible adult must be armed. Your safety is in your hands. No one's coming to save you. Hey, you someone, yeah, someone someone just mentioned something. Uh, they said that uh, Desert Eagle handles are too big for a lot of women's hands. I was just wondering now. It, it, it was a question I also asked. What are women getting right now? You know, what is this good weapon for a woman to to, 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 to have right now? What's popular with them? Well, right now it's the P three twenty six, right? And to me, that's a good balance. It's it's heavy enough to absorb the recoil. And yet it's still not, like I said to you, um, something that's stupid big, like, you know, like a Desert Eagle, because a Desert Eagle is a 50 caliber bullet. That's totally different. You Like, it, it's so impractical, like I said. But in the movies, you get shot with a Desert Eagle, you flip over backwards. That's not what's happening. Everything <laughs> is about what they call shot placement. Like, if you shoot somebody in the right spot, they're going down. You know what I'm saying to you? All of this, you shoot somebody, they dead. No. Another thing I hear all the time is like this. I'm going to get a shotgun. And when they come through the door, I'm just going to, and they're going to run. I say, yo, what if they on meth? <laughs> <laughs> what if they on meth? And they just thought that that was just like, and that turned them on. Now what? Yeah. There's a lot of stuff that our, our community has to catch up with and learn because it's just like, and this is why I'm here. Because when yeah. I first got in the game, it was very difficult because no one that looked like me, I could get information from, you know, which yeah. was strange because, okay, so I kept looking and kept looking. And, and then my I, wife. Huh? That's my wife. She said, write that down, baby. <laughs> <laughs> she, she tried to get one, man. She tried to school. Yeah, what's up? <laughs> so, so I had to step up. And you know what? Even me being on here is like, you know, I'm camera shy. I'm a guy from behind the scenes. You know what I'm saying? I like to do the work, but I realized I can't operate from behind closed doors. People got to see me, understand me. People who know me, love me. They know who I am. They know I'm not a nut. Because so, the first thing they say is, oh, you got a gun. Now you're going to kill somebody? You're going to shoot somebody? No. I wasn't going to do it before. Why would I do it now? Yeah. They'll say Yeah. Some people they, they, know what gun they wonder what gun you what would you suggest for women? Because before me and Max go back and forth on the Glock, Max started <laughs> catching, we call it glaucoma. He started like in a Glock more. I yeah, was a I had a little bit of. Glaucoma. And I, I, I'm, a, I'm a BP9 type of guy, but tell what the, what what's the guns for the women again? Well, I suggest um, the P320. Why? Because once you have the P320, the actual firearm part is the trigger. It's the fire assembly group. So you could put it into different size grip frames. So whatever whatever if your hand feels like, you could get a smaller, you get a medium, you get a large, according to the way that it fits in your hand. And it's and it's heavy enough to absorb the recoil. Now, everybody thinks that Glock was made by God. Ah, no, no, no. Glock is like a Sony TV back in the days. Now, who buying Sony TVs now? Facts. Who's <laughs> gonna pay all that money for? Okay, Sony was the best at the time. I get it, and it's the longevity. But we moved on from that. Now we got other guns that are, are surpassed in quality. But the reason I don't suggest Glock for women. You know, this is my personal opinion, is that the Glock is light, so it's a little bit snappier than other mm -hmm. guns are. So I'm like, listen, you got two choices. Either you want it to have more recoil or you want it, it's going to be heavier in your hand. It's a trade-off. You got to have either one. Man. So, I think that Glock got that funny uh, trigger from what I understand too, man. You know what I mean? It tends to fire off, they were saying. It's miraculous. No, that was the P320 that was, um, if it fell in a certain way, I got to admit, Okay. I had to return my joint too because it, if it fell a certain way, it would go off and stuff. But they fixed that, and I moved on from that. 
Max, Max as, a, as a consultant, um, is there anybody that you had to dissuade from getting the gun that you just feel like they, they just should be ineligible, um, maybe not willing to do what it takes to have a gun? Because I always wonder, some people, I've always heard you don't pull a gun unless you're ready to use it. Have you run into people that they just it's just not their thing? What do you mean? As far as getting the firearm, I feel that they're not suited for it. Well, you feel if, if somebody comes to you and they they it's just have you ever tried to tell somebody? I, I'll give you a quick example. This is totally off. But my grandfather tried to teach my grandmother how to drive. He gave her one lesson. He took a permit. He tore it up. <laughs> <laughs> he tore it up. No. <laughs> no. So so this is what's happening. So far, I've never come across somebody who I felt was that you know was a little bit off or had a hidden agenda or potentially be you know some type of you know serial killer or whatever so i kind of fill people out and i use my discretion if i feel somebody is a little bit off i gotta deal with the conscious of i'm helping you get this and now you're a problem out here you know what I'm saying? i want to see it kind of like you i'm a vibe type of person you know if i feel your vibe is pure and good i'm gonna work with you you know what i'm but saying max, max if somebody comes through that door they should be willing if they have to to kill somebody that's part of it right if they come to that door, yes. your life, have you ever yes. met somebody where you're like they just can't do that i've had discussions with some of my friends who might be watching and i try to explain <laughs> to them if somebody comes in through this door that means that they walk park they walk past two park cars got past an alarm they're not coming here to talk to me and yeah. i'm not talking to them right. the only instruction i'm going to tell them is that now here goes another thing. I'm glad you said that. There's a script that you should stick to. Leave, I have a firearm and I'm on the phone with police. So me and the missus have a little script that we set up that if something is to happen, she used to call the police and describe who I am. Black dude, bald head, salt and pepper beard is the homeowner, not the killer. Don't kill him. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then, like I said, it's like, okay, somebody broke into the house. He's coming over here. We have no way, no way to retreat. We cannot retreat. He's downstairs looking into it or, or else I have to stay in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. I'm not going nowhere. So you come through that door. I don't, there's no valuable things that are, that are downstairs from where I live to that. I have to go and protect. You could take everything, but if you try to come through that door, wrong house, man. Yeah, yeah man. Was, I've been yeah. in his house. He, he when you see this in those videos, <laughs> yeah. but back to my, my man, my man, my man from college actually just texted me a question because uh, I think you could put it in the chat. He said it P360 or the Hellcat. P365 all day. And you know who that is. You know who we call that, right? <laughs> what, what, what you call it, man? What you call it? Tell him what you call it. That's Sheila. That's Crystal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good? so let me let me oh, <laughs> I'll tell the quick story, right? Now, back in the days in high school, me and D was cool, right? But there was one one of my homegirls, she was just kind of like, she was just like our dude, our boy. And anytime somebody messed with us, listen, if a if a shorty got out of line, she would step to them. And that was Crystal. And I was always like, <laughs> like my protector, but Crystal was short and stocky. You know what I'm saying to you? So when I got the 365, I was like, yo, D. This is gonna remind me. This is like Crystal. She's so short. She's stocky. You know. So we named the Crystal. So, yo, so my so man, I named the Crystal. So yeah. Tiger, the, the gun that we are practicing sometime. When I first started practicing with Mag, is 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 the, the three uh, P three sixty five. So it's a great gun. Nice. That like, handles well. It's a great. It's a great firearm. Great firearm. But somebody else yeah, had a question. Sorry. Max, um, can you give everybody some tips as far as gun safety and storing their firearms at home? Absolutely. Now. There's two things that I always say. It has to be locked. There's no under the pillow. There's no under the bed. The kid ain't going to find it. It has to be locked. But the good thing is that nowadays, the safe that they have is so sophisticated. There's the biometric safe. You put your thumb on there, boom, mm -hmm. it's open in seconds. You hit a code. I have my safe, basically, if anybody tampers with it, I get a text message. It tells me, did somebody mess with it? It was open this amount of time. There is no such thing as keeping a firearm outside of a locked compartment. You absolutely have to. There's no question about that. Mm -hmm. That's the number one thing. And the second thing that I say that maybe some people may not agree with me on, I believe that you should. it should be mandated for you to have training once you get your firearm. 
too many people are getting firearms and then they like throwing in the drawer. They're like, okay, if something happened, I'll handle it. No, that's like saying like, yo, you got a new driver who drove a couple of days, got a new car, and you expect them to drive across country. Not gonna happen without accident. Yeah. So you need to be able to train. And this is some of the stuff in the services I provide also with Alpha by Attitude Training. Because I realized, guess what? Once again, I was looking for trainers that look like me. And I couldn't find them. It's very hard. In New York City, absolutely. You'll yeah. find, you know, here and there, it's very, very hard. And then because the way that New York City works is you're not allowed to um hold a firearm unless you have a license but thank god for jersey jersey allows you to rent guns and shoot without a license so that's how i've been able to train some people who don't have licenses and say listen i want to know what it's like i said all right come on let's take a little trip either guns for hire or on um, reloaders and i'll say let's go out here pick a gun let's go train them they get a feel for it then they put in their license and stuff like that and we move on yeah, and Max, what was the gun that you said that uh, the head was a uh, that dropped them that could drop and shoot off again? It was the P three twenty. You you were shooting the P three twenty. The three sixty five is is that's crystal. That's the yeah. little little one that goes no, in the back. No, because no, that's true about the three three twenty. My man Hayward got busted dead. That's the gun that uh, ended his life. He dropped it and shot himself. Yep, that's uh, true. Story. That, so that that's why I'm going to show people understand how safety and like having one in the chamber, what that means and stuff like that. Can you explain what that means? Yes. Okay. So listen, the rule of the rule of thumb is like this, right? When something happens, you your adrenaline runs, and then now you're going to operate from the adrenaline running is going to make your skill level drop. So you have to train hard for that to happen. So one of the things that, like I said, with, with what you were saying with your friend is like, you keep one in the chamber, you gotta really be sure about what you're doing. And that gun had a recoil. So let's say you buy a gun and then you say, all right, what the hell, this is, I bought it, I'm not thinking about it, whatever the case is. And there's a national recoil. You gotta stay within the community to keep up with what's happening with that gun. So it's almost like, let's say you bought a freaking, a Ford truck and the Ford truck has a major recoil recall and you're sitting here not paying attention to the news and you your car blow up it happens you know what i'm saying unfortunately but like i said sig took back the guns they fixed it and it's, it hasn't been problems i mean sig sig actually beat glock toe to toe for the army so now sig has the contract for the u.s army so let me ask you another question max um like when you talk when you and i have conversations about the police protecting us can you give us the statistics on the data on population to police and stuff like that and, and expand on that? Okay. This is one of the arguments I have with people, right, that live in New York City. I said to them, they say, oh, why you got a gun? The police, I said, okay, let me start off by asking you this. How many people in New York City? They don't. I said, I'll tell you. 8.9 million people in New York City. How many um, police officers? They don't know. They're like probably 300,000. No, 22,000. Okay, now out of the 22,000, how many are racist? How many are fat and out of shape? How many go call out sick just because they need, they, whatever? It's not, the ratio to that doesn't match. It makes me feel comfortable. So that's why I keep telling people, you're your first responder. Mm -hmm. You are your first responder. Even if the police wanted to be there, they can't prevent the crime. They could only be there to, like I said, collect the evidence and say, okay, yo, yeah, they just look like a good guy. Unfortunately, he died. Wow. Uh, can't do much for him. And then another thing that I found out from being thrusted into this uh, uh, culture, I found out that the duty to protect, and people don't understand this, do you know that the police do not have, a, they, can, they don't have a duty to protect you? In other words, a crime could occur right in front of them and they do nothing, you can't sue them like you were supposed to do nothing. And I'll give you a quick example of that. I don't know if you guys remember, there was a guy named Maxim Gelman. He was a serial killer out in uh, Coney Island, white dude. The reason I remember him so easy is because I'm like, my name is Maxim. So I'm like, yo, damn, the first time my name is blasted on TV is for a serial killer. Great. <laughs> so this dude's sitting here. He gets on the train, the whole city looking for him. He gets on the train. He goes right to the conductor's booth with two cops, two transit cops is there. He sits there, knocks on the door, like, let me in, let me in. They're like, nah, we ain't letting you in. He turns to the first person he sees. Uh, I think this guy named Joe. 
from Staten Island or whatever. He stabs him, keeps stabbing. The police are watching this man get stabbed. The guy's fighting for him, fighting for the knife and stuff like that. Gets the knife out of his hands and whatever, but it's stabbed up. Then the police come out and say, okay, we got it from here. Now that dude, of course, is going to be pissed. Like you sat here, both of you guys had guns, and y'all didn't, y'all didn't do nothing. And guess what they said? When he tried to sue them, they were like, Mm-mm-mm. Supreme Court, Gonzalez versus um on Washington, D.C. It already happened so many times that the appellate court kicks it out. It doesn't even get to the Supreme Court. So that's what the scary and the reality is. They do not have to protect you. Unfortunately, it's their maybe their moral obligation that they should, but they don't have to. You can't say it's your job. And then all of a sudden, let's think about it, right? People run around, defund the police, whether you agree with it or not, right? You want to defund the police. You're angry at them because they're abusing you. And then when something happened, you call them and you don't even try to handle it yourself. Some don't look right about that, man. Max, I got to ask you one more, one more question. This is what a lot of people want to know. A lot of people have been asking all week online. If you have a Red Bull machine in your yard and somebody steal it and you shoot them, are you going to jail? That's what people, I'm not talking about myself. I'm saying that's what people ask him. Yo, Kelvin, man. Yo, 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 Kelvin. (laughs) Yo, you got to warn me with that one, man. All right, so this Max, is I'm just tired of the natives. I'm no, no, no. <laughs> All right, so let me let me explain this. In, in, okay, what, what, what makes 100 percent sense? People need to know when you can actually right. discharge your firearm. Now, you cannot discharge your firearm because somebody is trying to break in your home. They have to break in because your life is in danger. Because what if they never get in? Now, this is the way the law is in New York City. Now, other places like. Florida has staying your ground. Texas has um, castle doctrine. In, in Texas, your neighbor could be somebody breaking in your neighbor's house. You get your gun and go shoot them. You can't do that here. You cannot do that here. Here is intimate danger. That means that you could not do anything else, and you got to use the same catchphrases that the police use to get off. And it's like, yo, I fear for my life. I just thought you. I, I was scared, and that's the end of it. Everything in this business. And in this firearm community is about articulation. You got to be able to articulate what happened clearly. You don't want to use too many words. Like they said, keep it short and stupid, just simple and stupid, just real basic. And you'll be fine. Like it'll be up to the prosecutor at that, at that time. But is to me, I'd rather be judged by 12 than carried by six. I can always come back. Amen. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Max, I completely agree with that last statement that um, you made about, um, you know, you got to take action. You got to um, protect your home. And I do mean when I say that, I mean your home inside. Somebody breaks in your home. You absolutely have a right to protect yourself. And if you fire a legal firearm, you will be you know, justified for doing that. But the thing is, I'm going to backtrack on something you said before. The police do have an obligation to protect you. And the thing is, is when they don't do it and they fail to do it, it's considered dereliction of duty. They mm. There's a lot of cops that have been suspended and have been fired as a result of dereliction of duty. So Terrell, I'm going to disagree got, with you. Yeah, look okay. it up. Dereliction well, of duty. I definitely got to look it up because I was disturbed just seeing that happen. And I'm like, yo, how is this possible? And I well, read... Like, is, no, I don't mean to cut you off, but the thing is, I'm not denying that it that happened. There are cops that, you know, they're in tough situations and they fold. You know what I'm saying? And then, like I said, there's going to be charges and ramifications for that because, you know, you the the, the 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 police department has to serve and protect. That's what they. Right. That's what their job is. Right. Yeah. So listen, I agree with you. Like like somebody, some people think like, oh, you just like no. I got so many friends that are cops. It's ridiculous, man. Mm-hmm. Too bad they can't shoot better than me, though. Hey, <laughs> you know no, I'm a, I'm gonna agree with you on that too, because the thing is, the police department when I was there, you only had to qualify on the range two times a year. So the average cop was only shooting two times a year where you need to shoot a lot more to be more of an accurate shooter. You know, like we had some guys, they would shoot weekly, you know what I'm saying? Then some guys would shoot monthly. It all based, it was based on the, a preference with each person, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Rodney, because, I would yeah. tell you a joke, right? Real Go quick. Ahead. At the range, right? When you see somebody shooting crappy or showing off, you're like, probably a cop. <laughs> <It's> a <joke>. joke. <laughs> listen, I love, listen. Uh, uh, I, 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 my people's, you know the crazy thing is, everywhere I go, I always get mistaken as a cop. 
Okay. I've had, I had cops pull me over and they're like this. You want a job? I'm like, yeah. If it'll get me out this ticket, right? <laughs> I, had, I, had, I, had, I remember a time when I tried to buy Lucy. Yeah. They were like, you're a cop, man. I'm like, you know what? I need to stop smoking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is, it's, 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 it's a lot of truth to what he's saying about, you know, the accuracy of cops. There's cops that actually, they used to fail at the range and get their guns removed. Because the thing wow. is, if you don't shoot a certain score, the department gives you a second chance. And if you fail again, they remove your guns. Yeah, well, wow. I'll be honest with you. Yeah. I have worked with some cops. Mm -hmm. I understand. Because you know what? Even in the police department, you know it's so crazy that I kind of I don't get it. It seems like black cops are really not gun people and white cops are. Like I see the I know only one that's like a retired cop and he's a gun guy. And most of the black cops are like, ah, don't bother with that. That's a headache. You're gonna get yourself yeah. in trouble. And I'm like, I don't get it. Why is that? Is that something in the department that they kind of like, I don't know, vibes what? or something? No, the thing is, is there's truth to that you just said too. Like usually the brothers or whatever, we're not really into the big guns or whatever because we're there for a different reason. We get we're there for because it's a good job, we got benefits, we got a pension plan, and mm -hmm. you know, we got job security. Right. Sometimes the white boys are there because they're gun lovers and it's a great opportunity to get as many guns as they can. So, Ooh, you yeah. know, we call, we call them buffs. They like they get real buffy and they have like 17, 18, 19 guns. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a confession here today on the show. Oh, Lord. When I was, yeah, when I was a supervisor, the guys that had all the guns, I would keep them in my squad. I would make sure I transferred them out of the squad because mm -hmm. the thing is. We have to inspect. We used to have to inspect those guns yearly, and this guy right. bringing in 16, 17 guns for me to inspect—that was a pain in the ass. So yeah, I said, nah, I don't want him in my. Too much paperwork. Too, yeah, much, too paperwork. much paperwork. Exactly. So the guy with 16, 17 guns, I didn't want him in my squad. No, I get it. Listen, like yeah, I yeah. said, my my whole journey started off with not really with guns. It started off with the fact that, like I said to you, with all these storms and stuff like that. I started nudging myself and becoming a prepper. And, and that's something our community needs to pick up on. It's just like, why do we always like reaction them? Like fam, you know it's going down. Look, hurricane season comes every year faithful. Like mm -hmm. why not like, you know what? I go to Costco, they look at me funny because I only have water in my car. I'll have five or six Dinos, I don't want Costco run for him. I'm like, yo D, <laughs> come on, chill. Don't play around with this man. Cause water, there's a rule of three for everything. Three minutes without air, you're dead. Three days without water, you're dead. Three weeks yeah. without food, you're dead. Three hours in the um in the element, whether it's too hot, too cold, yeah, your body starts getting compromised. People sleep on that. Water yeah. is like essential for us. And it's just like, get a couple of bottles of water. Get a couple of little cases, yeah. man. You know what was yeah. funny? Sandy was the closest. You know, I live in Long Island, and I, and I don't know how it was in there, but I'm, I can imagine. Sandy was the closest we came to, like, complete, like, apocalypse. You know what I mean? Here in, 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 in New York. You know, I remember having to drive all the way out to Brooklyn. You know what I mean? Just for gasoline. You know yeah. what I mean? That was insane. Yeah. You know? yeah. Um, that was yeah, man. But, yeah, you know. so it was, I see a question was, came up that I wanted yeah, to address yeah. real quick. Um, somebody asked about C, uh, USCCA membership which is basically like shooter's insurance, right? Which basically means that, God forbid, something happens to you, like you in a you in a shoot. Something happens, they come in your house, and you have to discharge your firearm, and now all of a sudden you need lawyer fees because guess what? It's really up to the prosecutor that says, nah, he could have jumped out the window. And now, so what it is is that would kick in first. They would start the process because you paid into it. But guess what? New York City was like, no, this is death insurance. They shut it down. New York is the worst. And I'm telling you right now, the gun owners out there, we have to find and twist these politicians. We got to get them. Somebody can't be, because all the politicians in New York is anti-gun. And it's just like, it's easy because there's no pushback. There's not enough of us stepping forward and saying, no, we don't want this. Listen, whether you're Democrat or Republican, it doesn't matter to me because they're two, they're two wings on the same bird. And if they don't move the same, you can't fly. So at the end of the day, we got to push this forward and be like, no, 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 no. You got to be, there's got to be some type of moderate behavior for this. You know what I'm saying? It can't be just like, no, anti-gun, I don't want to deal with this. It's, no, we got we to gotta do better. 
We got to We got to do better as gun yeah. owners. Is yeah, there an age? Is there an age? Is there an age limit at which you can start? You know, training of, regarding firearms and everything. Like you know, because I see videos of like little, you know, white kids running around. You know. Well. <laughs> well, I'm oh, good. I'm glad <laughs> you said that. Old, tearing up, man, in the road, in the in the woods, man. You know what I mean? I'm just curious. Well, okay. To go to a range in the metropolitan area, you got to be at least eight years old. Now, oh, I got some facts for you guys. So what I've seen in my days, I, when I first started going to the range, I went to Guns For Hire, and I would see the frailiest eight-year-old girl with her dad and stuff like that. And I'm like, word, I got three boys. I bought my 11-year-old, and I bought my 14-year-old at the time. And they were like, and I'm be honest with you, D, and you know this, when you're in the gun range, and even if it's white men, white women, you don't feel the racial tension. It's almost like, it's, I gotta say, it's almost like a fraternity. Yeah. It's not what I thought it was. But then mm -hmm. you do see, like I said to you, it's important. Do not hide these things from your kids. If they, uh, to me, if they pass the age of 12, don't hide it. Don't play. Because right. when I started taking my kids, right, first I trained them at home. I'm like, okay, what are the four safety rules? They had to go over it. Keep your finger off the trigger. Don't point it at nobody. Know what's behind it. You know what I'm saying? So they had to keep reciting those things to me. And then I said, say it again. Let me see how you handle it. How do you pick it up? Index your finger. People people, people have a habit of picking up a gun like it's a mug. So the first thing they do is this. Look, they put their finger in it. No, right here. It ain't going to go nowhere. So this... <laughs> So from that on, that from that going on, when my son went finally went and my friend came out who was a cop and he's a gun guy, he bought out the second most powerful handgun. He said, this is a rite of passage. When my son shot that gun, I felt like I looked back and I was like, wow, everybody was happy and proud. Like, yeah, I was like, oh, shoot. I didn't realize that the gun community was it's a small community now. I'll say this much. It's so small that they need us. So I'll be honest with you. If they didn't need us, maybe things would be a little bit different. But I don't I haven't really experienced discrimination at all. It's been nothing but love. There's a question also in the chat. Uh should black people join the NRA? Oh, good question. Uh, <laughs> that's a good question. Well, question. I'll tell you this much. I'm not against the NRA. I understand what they did with the Morford Act. That's basically when the um, Black Panthers were, um, they they went into the state capitol in California and they marched with weapons and then the NRA and Ronald Reagan, I believe, passed the Morford Act and the NRA supported it. The NRA never really supported any anti-gun. So yes, they did do that. But they also were the one who sued um, the um, licensing division, the NYPP, because what they did is, it used to be $500 just to get a handgun permit. So they sued them and says, look, why would you, you just, so it's a rich versus poor thing. So I'm not saying there are other um, black gun organizations. They're not as big. There's Niagara. Um, there's a few others that's out there, but they haven't really picked up the steam. You know what I'm saying? But you, to me, I would put my money in, I would send, I would send the NRA money. Why? Because they have the machine. Cause you gotta look, it's like, it's not about the individual, it's about the right. When white people talk about gun rights, they say, it's my right, it's different. We act all timid, like we don't get boisterous about it. We act like, oh, can I please have a gun? No, that is the constitutional right. That's the one right that says, shall not be infringed. And like I said, I never used to get it when I used to hear these white men talk with such indignant, like, yo, that's my right, man. And I'm just like, you know what? And they'll say something. They say, "Yo, listen. Any person without any anybody who can't have a gun is a slave. Only slaves are not allowed to have guns. So this behavior, they see it in that type of fashion. It's real. It's real." Well, the first, one of the first things they did when they freed black people was take away the take away the take away the guns, take away anything any kind of farming tools, so they made sure you have any kind of weapons. Now, D, you want to hear the crazy stuff? The NRA was really established to protect the blacks and give them that right. But guess what happened? They seen it and they hip hopped it just like they did everything else. They remixed it mm. like, um, what y'all doing with it? Like jazz and all the other stuff that we had and it was kind of made for us. 
they hip hopped it and remixed it and put it, and like I said, and took over. Now, like I said, you could put your money with Naga. I would, I would do that too. The um, the black um organizations, but I will also send money to the NRA because that's the biggest machine. That's the one that has the lobbyists, that has the people, that has the power to to like say push back. So it's kind of like you can't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Yeah. And tell people also, you have licenses in other states. New York doesn't really um, accept your license. Recognize. In other states. So, so, yeah, recognize. Right. So just make sure people understand it. So, so listen, if you have a gun permit in New York, no one else, they don't recognize nobody and nobody recognizes them. Now, other states, when you leave it, like you go to Georgia, you get Florida license, you got 32 different states, that's it. You're good over here. But New York, nobody. And nobody, nobody does that to them. And that's the that's another problem. New Yorkers don't push back hard enough with gun rights. And, I, and like I said to you, it's ironic that all of a sudden now that now the new the largest gun owners now in recent time are black women. They're going to pass these laws. They're going to pass. them. It, it's, it's really serious. You know how serious I know it is. There's certain channels that I follow that I, I know that are, they give good contests, but they're not really black friendly. But even when they start asking like, oh, well, we're reaching out to all organizations, you know, African, okay, I get it. You're getting desperate and you're seeing that it's really starting to click mm. and you need mm. the help, so. Mm. Wow. wow, Max. So Max, let me ask, uh, so where can, uh, if, 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 if you had a family, right? And you saw in your family, you had your, uh, would you like, I'm trying to think like I'm trying to say like in New York you can't carry a firearm, so this question wouldn't even matter. It's most of the people in the South, like my friends live in open carry states, right? Right. Would what what would the tips would you tell your family that you know you have your firearm, you've run into a situation, what kind of tips would you give your family? Like if somebody approached you in your family in an open carry state, what would you what kind of tips would you give? Well, okay, if you're carrying a firearm, now open carry means that your gun is exposed out on your hip, which I don't really like I said, I don't really like that idea. Even if I was in a state where I could carry, I would still conceal carry. Now, you do have to have a drill with your family members if something happens, because like I said to you, if your wife is there, she has to understand, listen, babe, if something happened, I'm gonna push you this way, get behind me, stay behind my shoulder, and we gonna get busy if we, we, I'm gonna get you out of here. Just like I said to you, in, in the active suit, shooter situations, and you gotta get, you gotta clear the room, you gotta get out of there. So. She has to know where to move. It can't be a chaotic situation. And I know that, unfortunately, people don't think this far ahead and say, yo, that's a lot of planning. It's fear mongering. No, you got to think. Just like, you know, back in the days, look, they used to encourage you to have fire drills in your house. You should. Maybe you we should. We have at school. We have at the workplace. So you got to have them. Yeah, it only makes sense. Yeah, so any, any any other questions? Sorry, guys, I don't want to take up the time. Me and Max could talk all night with each other. So I know I hope I didn't talk over my time. No, 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 no. You good? You good? You good? Good. Any questions, Kelvin? Oh uh, well, you know what? One last thing. Um, I noticed a lot of uh, guys that I know that are either retired law enforcement or just grew up with guns. They have started professional security companies where they're right. allowed to carry. They carry and it's, it's it's work related. And then there used to be a thing. I remember in the eighties when my father had his gun, he was part of a gun club, and they were like, "You were allowed to go back and forth and take your gun to the range." So that was kind of the way of. And ranges back then would stay open twenty four hours. So if you ever got caught, supposedly you was on your way to the range. That was kind of the idea. But as far as those companies are concerned, what what loopholes do people have to carry um, in New York? None. 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 <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so okay, let me explain to you why, why I think it's none, right? Okay, there is a 24 hour range in Freeport. Now, sure you could be a member, right? Mm -hmm. But your your gun is registered not to you but to your home. Mm -hmm. So if you live in Rosedale and you in Brooklyn talk about you going to the gun range, they're like, yo, 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 in Freeport? Like, fam, how did you want to don't make sense so it do has to, it does have to be in a geographic uh uh where it makes sense you know what i'm saying and you could always say and then once again it's kind of like you could carry the gun but you can't have no ammo in the magazine mm -hmm. oh by the way listen i gotta tell our community this listen family 
it's not clips it's a magazine yeah magazine. that's the <laughs> first indication that you don't know see yeah. the respect is different like i said i show people this all the time I said once you start using the right jargon whoever you're talking to whether they feel funny about you they're like oh you know what you're talking about i'll listen yeah. And this is the way I defeat those, you know, people that are or, or assume that I'm gonna take the gun and I'm gonna hold it sideways at the uh -huh. gun store. Like, clack, clack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. That's Calm the word. Down. I know what I'm talking about. I probably know more about this gun than you do, so fall back, okay? <laughs> That's just me though. <laughs> yeah, I got you. Thanks a lot, Max. Appreciate it. No problem, no problem. Yeah. Max, you um you you have something that you can give us to, for people that want to get in touch with you for training as far as um shooting at the range, you know, learning how to hold and operate firearms. Yes. It's my um Gmail is alpha by attitude. I am on Instagram. You if you follow the monitor, anybody else, I'm I'm actually stepping out and really putting a campaign out there and reaching out. And I really want to like I said, do a, a meet and shoot day where people who do have firearms step forward come on let's get together let's shoot let's talk and get those things going on so i'm available for training i'm available for consulting you know if you have any questions like i said our people i was forced upon this i had to do it I kept looking around. Yeah, we got a question right here it says what if i move to new york can i bring my firearm no i guess if they have a firearm in another state you then... have to uh right so one of the things that you'd have to do is you'd have to reapply. New York is not giving you no shortcuts. You yeah. got to get online with everybody else. And if you do have a firearm, we're only, if it's a handgun, you're limited to 10 rounds. So you can't come in with your 17 round magazine for Florida. It ain't going to work. It's not going to work. New York is very stringent on that. They don't give you, in fact, I found out um, through a couple of people is that they actually sit your paperwork up for two months. They call it the cooling off period. So their idea yeah. behind this is like, oh, if you were gonna commit, not a crime, but let's say you had a beef or something, and you're like, I need a gun to get to go do something. Oh, uh, let me just uh, quickly apply for my license so they want to cool you off. But the reality is, if people want to do something, you're not gonna go and get a gun permit. That's yeah. why. That's why. This is one thing I want to talk about. Make sure that I reach people like this. Listen, when they pass gun laws. It has nothing to do with the criminal. The criminal will never <laughs> abide by the law. That's why they're a criminal. So they can pass all the laws they want to. Them dudes in the streets will always have what they have. It's not going to change anything. What it will affect is the law-abiding citizens, and that's what you're putting in jeopardy. And they have statistics that showed Australia tried it. You know what Australia's problem now is? The people who still have guns, they're doing home invasions. It's rampant. They tried it in China and other places. Guess what they're doing now? Mass stabbings. London, they got a real knife problem. They got a knife problem worse than we have a gun problem. Yeah, and I want to give a couple of quick statistics that I, I pulled up because people got it twisted out here, right? Let me tell you the deaths that have occurred. Smoking, 400,000. Soda, of um, 100,000. Alcohol, 88,000. Diabetes, 80. Stairs falling down the stairs, twelve thousand knives, fifteen hundred legal guns, four hundred and fifty. And the majority of the people that that get killed um, are the, the majority of people who die from gun violence is usually suicides. Mm -hmm. Janine yeah. wants to know what kind oh. of training you can do at home. Good, yo, without, good question, my ammo. man. Without right, ammo. so ammo prices is crazy right now. So what you do is called dry fire. And what you do is you unload the gun, obviously. You find a, a, a corner. Sometimes people use um, a light switch. Me, I have like a little piece of tape. I might go into the basement or something. And I rack the, and I take my time. I point it, breathe out, slowly pull the trigger, and try to make sure that this is not happening. You know what I'm saying? You try to make it real steady, isolate your, your, your fingers, where only this finger is moving and all this is not moving. And a lot of times when people come to train, they hold a gun like, for dear life, no. You can't move your fingers with this happening. So dry firing is definitely it. And there's also um, there's also an app that you can use. Uh, it's it's, it's a, a thing you could buy called um, Mantis X, where you put it underneath the, um, the gun 
And when you dry fire, it gives you an indication of what happened. You know, are you doing too much of this or too much of that? So it's a very good tool. Mm. Very good. Especially Man, with the price of ammo. One of my friends texted me, asked me, do you, uh, for you and Rod, let's, uh, uh, check out the law, law, uh, the law endorsement officer safety act. The law endorsement safety safety act. Have you guys heard of it? I don't know. No. No. Okay. I'm just saying, check it out. This is when you get a chance. I guess. I don't know what law mean. endorsement safety act. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, I don't know. I know. I don't know what that is, but I wish you put it in the chat. I think so. My eyes are getting a little blurry. I'm sorry about that. But um. Yeah. Yeah, so Max, where can people find you at? Man? Like, I really want to know. Like, do you want us to put it on the ticker? Like, Alpha, I know you're on yeah, Instagram. Listen, I just want to see. Put it, put it on the ticker. Put it down there. It's Alpha by Attitude um, at Gmail, and I'm also on uh, Instagram. Same handle. Uh, reach out to me any questions. Let me know. And I gotta give a couple of shout outs to a couple of people. You know who have really. Um, first of all, <laughs> Shan, I know you out there. Thank you so much for helping me with my IG. You know, yeah. I gotta give her some props. But um, also, like, there was only one guy who actually came to New York, Master Ray. You know what I'm saying? He's a very positive brother out in Philly. He actually ran for office and stuff like that. And guess what? The thing, the thing that bugged me out is, like, this dude looked like me. He from our era. He moved like me. You know, he's, I'm not going to say a street dude, but, yeah, he's a street dude. But he's smart and savvy, and he's been pushing this really hard he travels around the nation and he's doing his thing man i gotta admit that you know that kind of inspired me to step forward because i'm looking at him and i'm begging guys to come to new york back in the days and i'm like ain't nobody coming so whatever i'm gonna do it myself mm -hmm. so here i am okay ever g just explain it yeah allows retired no. military and retired law enforcement officers to conceal carry recent law yeah, yeah uh -huh. the only the only people carrying is just like you said, retired officers, active law enforcement. There are a few people that have um carry permits because they do some type of um uh personal bodyguarding, but those licenses are very hard to get. Um, or like you know, jewelers that carry diamonds and something like that. You have they they have permits for that. Those are kind of hard to get. You just have to prove that um this is what you do on a daily basis and you're always transporting some type of valuables. But um, those are only people that's carrying, and people like I said, um, people that are doing illegal acts. Those are the only people carrying guns. criminals. Yeah, yeah. They, they strapped up, they gripped up. That, but <laughs> yeah. you know, the only thing I always say: thank God they can't go to ranges to train. They yeah, can't yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. That's true. So Max, listen, man, I love you, brother, man. You know how I feel about you. I know this guy all damn near probably all my life. This man gave me a nickname in high school. Yeah, <laughs> we gotta talk about it. All right, so. The bonds, the bonds nickname is Man Baby. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna explain you why, right? So D back in the days, he looked like a grown ass man. He, looked, he had his Billy D swag on, and the, the women. I mean, I think some of the teachers were ready to hit on you. And I'm just oh, like, yo, not, man. Like, he's a man and a baby at the same time, man. <laughs> so, man, baby. <laughs> yo, yo, Max, man, I love you, brother. Thanks for coming love on. Give us info, man. man. And people so texting me, I don't know what number. Well, I'll tell them how to get at you because they text me, how can I get to you? So I don't know if I'm going to give you a number. We'll talk about that offline later on tonight. But hey, yo, Max, hey, yo, people, the send the number. I'm here. I know that they solid. Fellas, I would love to come back again. You know, let me know. Love to have you back, brother. Love to have, have, have you back. Max, we always, we always have reoccurring guests sometimes. So you definitely want to. You family, baby. So mm -hmm. and Max, I want to thank All you right, for that. When I, when I was sick, Max brought me everything I needed. He brought me the first thing, a Tylenol, apples, oranges, everything I needed. So I love this man. It's nothing Max can ever ask for. I would not give to this bro. I love you, man. Come on, man. D, come on, man. We, from, we from, I wasn't letting you go down. I was like, damn, man, don't take D out, man. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> we just relinked. Yeah. All right, brother. Peace, man. I told you. Thanks a lot, bro. All right, All right man. Right. Hey, brother. Take Thank care, love. Max. Thanks, care. Nice talking to you. All right. Oh, look. Yo, yo, you're blowing up, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was good, man. That was good. That's my man, Max, man. Love that brother, man. So, that, listen, I'm awful about people on themselves protecting their homes and Absolutely. what they have to do. Like, you know, I'd rather be judged by 12 than carried by six. Like, I don't want nobody harming my family. I know the same thing with you guys, man. So, yeah, I feel, yeah. I feel the same way, man. Yeah. And, I, and, and, and listen, man, I got it in my mind. I was asking for myself, man. I want to see how old, when can I start training mine, man? Me and mine. Mm. You know, I got mm. one. 
you know, he's up. I had planned on going to the range with him before he left off to the Navy, but, you know, they gave, they took care of that for me. You know what I mean? And then mm-hmm. the other two, man, just trying to get him used to it, man. Just trying to get him ready, letting him know that it is their right. It's the second yeah. amendment right. You know, it doesn't make me, you know, I'm not, I'm not, any, you know, crazy political with it or anything like that. You know, man, just, you know, it's just, it's your right. So you should be able to exercise it. Yeah, and like Kelvin and Kelvin and Rodney both got family in South Carolina. I got a North Carolina family. We went down south. You always seen guns anyway. My grandfather went above the Dale on uh, when he came in the door. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was, it was everywhere. You know? And it yeah. also those guns fed your family too because they had to hunt. Well, you know, yeah. historically as well, they stopped riots against our people too. You know what I mean? It was <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. You yeah. Know, so, you know, I, I uh, I'm a firm believer of you know people being able to have firearms in their home. Um. I've seen cases where those firearms in the home have actually saved people's lives. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Mm-hmm. So, brothers, man, it's getting late. I'm hungry. I know you guys are hungry. Kevin's tired, man. You know what I'm saying? He got, he got his, you know, he got his sexy look on for for a Saturday night and everything. Go <laughs> 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 get him, Calvin. Go get another, him, Calvin. Another, yeah, another, another great show, man. All we guys, peace. Jamie, take us out. Maybe, y'all. Yeah.